What is going on, YouTube? After an extended delay, we are back with the Beastly Thought Show live, the most Beastly Thought Show on the internet. Damn right. <laughs> Guys, it's been so long. It's been two weeks since we did the show. I couldn't do the show last week. I was uh, dealing with some family stuff down in Philadelphia. My trip got extended an extra day. I didn't realize that was going to happen, so we missed the show, but man... We didn't miss out on news because there's been so much news coming out over the last two weeks. We have a ton to talk about today. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, especially now, too, with PAX. Even more, you know, gaming-centric news is being uh, flooded in the streets. So that's right. That's right. It's a great time to be – man, this has been a really good year. It has been. It really has been. You know, last year was really good because we got new consoles. This year has been really good because we got, we've got we been getting to play these new consoles and say what you will about the drought of games. I've been consistently entertained all year by games. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, the people who say that the Xbox One and the PS4 don't have games are probably more trolls than anything else because, you know, uh, when it comes to... They don't have money for Xbox One or PS4. <laughs> probably so. Uh, there's just been so much. Uh, and, and, and not only on the AAA uh, side, well, triple A's haven't been as many, but the amount of indies that I've been seeing this year and, and the the amount of quality games, there's just so many coming and they're constantly coming. It's like a it's like a torrential rain of video games. Yeah, this this fall is going to be super exciting too. Nine to five gamers, how you been, man? It's been a long time. I want to hear about what you've been playing. I also want you to talk about your YouTube channel rebranding because I saw some new intros on your channel that look awesome. Yes, sir. A new little uh, I don't know a little icon like a little uh, avatar that looks yeah, really cool too. Yeah, actually, uh, talk about my uh, YouTube channel real quick. Um, a guy that I actually talk to through Instagram, like mm -hmm. he likes my pictures and I like his and all that stuff, he contacted me and was like, hey, do you want me to do – he designs T-shirts for like all these companies. And he was like, do you want me to do new stuff for your uh, YouTube channel? And I was like, yeah, do whatever you want. And he's like, do you have any ideas? And I was like, not really. And then he's like, what games do you play? And I told him, like, what, what are my favorite games ever? And he was like, okay, I'll work with that. And then he came up with the design, the logo, all that stuff. And he was just like, okay, I'll do it. And the it, intro it was, is really slick. Like the way it uses all the orange with kind of the building in the letters, it looks it looks really professional, really cool. Like an original, like I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm adding my actual logo to it. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to add some more, uh, some more sounds and all types of other stuff to it as well. So he's... He like contacted me right out the blue one day while I was That's at work, awesome. and I was like, I was like, cool, no. I'm, I'm down for that. No, you said you you know him through what Instagram? Like like Instagram, like I post pictures and he posts pictures, and he was posting like all this artwork that he did, and I like would comment back to him, and he's a big gamer too. He like plays a lot of games. Who who is he on Instagram? Give him uh, a shout out because it's gone. Fed clothing at at Fed clothing, and if you look him up on Instagram, he has Instagram. He plays like every damn system. He has like pictures. Uh, like he plays his Vita. He plays all retro games as well. He like has a Dreamcast and he shows like him playing that a lot, which is uh, a lot. Of, I don't know. I I dig his content because he he shows that he supports everything and plays everything. Yeah, I usually don't talk about intros of videos too much, but I was actually really blown away by it. It looked really good. <sighs> yeah, I yeah, noticed but... right off the, the the rip as soon as I played your video, I, I was like, damn. You know, nine to five has been going ham on this stuff. Uh, just, just make sure you tell him he has to send me a message because I was. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, and on to what I've been playing. I've been trying to beat all the 150 CC Mario Kart, like, and I've been playing that a lot online with like all the Nintendo guys in like the gaming industry. Like, there's all these dudes with Nintendo YouTube channels, and they set up tournaments, uh -huh. and you can join their tournaments online anytime. So me. And my one buddy from work, we would join in on their tournament and play it the whole time that the tournament went on, which those guys are on another level in Mario Kart. They they make us look so damn bad. Wow, <laughs> that's they, the they seriously. It's like I've never played a game of a well-designed game like that. Is that you can jump right into that game and immediately start playing it. But there is yeah. a depth to that game. You can get good at that game. You wouldn't think you could, but you can. Yeah, and uh, like last week Wednesday, we played where it was. With items, and then the the room we set up on uh, Saturday, it was last week Saturday, we played with only mushrooms. So you had only mushrooms, and you literally had to know every shortcut. And they were, they were doing shortcuts that during the time trials, when you see the computers do it, they're, mm -hmm. doing, they're doing a shortcut they've never seen before. 
which is crazy. It's like they, they found out the nooks and the crannies of the, the course that you're on, and they, they kind of rig it up in a sense to launch off of a pad to make a jump that's not even there. <laughs> it's kind of cool because you learn a lot from those guys too, playing with them. When you're yeah. playing online, they're showing you where to go, and you, you just follow them. Like You'll do one lap, and you'll see where they go, and it's like, all right, I'm just going to follow you and do the same thing you did. So, so any, more, cool. uh, any more Shovel Knight? Um, no, no, I beat I beat Shovel Knight fully. I I haven't unlocked all the weapons yet. I still haven't uh, been trying to do that. Certain levels, it's it's so hard to get through those levels and then also be looking for the the weapons or whatever you need. It it takes a lot. It takes it's it's one of those games where you almost wish you weren't playing on the pad because I want to break my pad a lot of the times. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I, I beat uh, Last of Us again. I'm I'm going through on New Game Plus on Survival right now. Mm-hmm. I went through on E, like I just go on through on Easy to collect everything. Like I collected all the the extra little knickknacks and all that shit. Yeah. And then I played on Survival Normal, and then I played on Survival Game Plus, and I've been playing on that. So the single player in that is so good, and the if you like the gameplay, the gameplay is good. I, you know, I, that's a funny way of saying it, but like, if you are into that slower pace, like real thoughtful mechanic of gameplay, it is really fun. Yeah. And it's deep. I, I actually hey, had. Are you talking about to... video games or fun and what? Yeah, I'm about <laughs> the... Okay. I actually have one thing that I thought was a big gripe to me about that game, and I just found it out today. Like. That uh, when you when you're posted on a wall and you're trying to look over and say you're crafting something, sometimes you'll like stand up on whatever you're by. You know what I'm talking about, BC? Yeah. I know you know. <laughs> but like if you're close to it and you're crafting your item, instead of crafting, you like get up on top of whatever you're uh, posted on. Mm-hmm. Which it got me killed twice today, and I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> so yeah, they've been working on a lot of patches for that game. Um, and uh, you told me you got a chance to play both of the new free DLC maps. Uh, why don't you tell everybody what you thought about them? I got a chance to play one, um, and uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Can't. The, the one, one, the one is from where um, where Ellie first gets the sniper rifle. Yeah. And she's shooting off the building. That's and you're the one playing I'm pretty much in that area. That that map was awesome. I like it because there's a lot of different flanking points. Like you can go literally around in the whole building and the building gives you cover throughout the building, you know, and then you can come out on the other side or come out behind the whole building. It's it's done genius. Yeah, I think that uh, the, the fact that Nutty Dog gave those maps away for free uh, for the PS3 and the PS4 is a good thing because there's been a lot of issues with the, uh, the, with the party system uh, getting into a multiplayer match. Um, now I, you know I know how to pretty much get around that. You know you just basically back out of the lobby and go back in. But the fact that they were, they worked hard to make those maps and they gave them away for free, it just means a lot to me as a consumer. I thought that was a great move. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and another big thing is is they the uh, Naughty Dog himself came out and said if you're having troubles getting in a room, just back out and join again. They 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 said it themselves, so mm-hmm. they knew what the problem was, which was cool. And they, they handled it, and they dealt with it very well by giving us free content, like you said. Yeah, uh, for me, these last couple of weeks have been uh, a lot of The Last of Us. Um, I've been playing that game almost to the point where I want to stop. I want to force myself to stop <laughs> because I feel like you know becoming addicted. It's like when I turn on the PS4, I immediately go to The Last of Us no matter what. Um, like I've got the new infamous, uh, well, I can't call it DLC, the standalone DLC, uh, First Light with Fetch. I got that, never even booted it up. Uh, I've had uh, the last two episodes of The Walking Dead Season 2 now for, well, I just got the, the fifth episode, but I've had the fourth since that one came out and never got a chance to play it uh, because I know that I had to put, you know, set aside time to actually see that through. So yesterday, I sat aside for three and a half, four hours, me and the whole family, and played through that experience, the last two episodes, which were fantastic. Um, Telltale Games, they're they're take on the, the Walking Dead universe to me is just as deep and engaging and exciting as uh, Kirkman's vision of, of The Walking Dead. The story they weave to me stands alone alongside the original story. Um, it's a great game. The way that you interact with these characters, the character development is so fantastic. Uh, for the, I know everybody out there knows what The Walking Dead is. It's, it's kind of like an interactive movie. 
But uh, if you're into that kind of thing, you like to watch engaging stories and, and you know, set yourself on certain paths and make, make choices that affect the game, because this one here actually does have choices that really affect the out the, the ending of this season. I really enjoyed that. Um, looking forward to probably this weekend, well, tomorrow, since we get a, another day off, getting into the new uh, Infamous game. Before you move on off The Walking Dead, i got a couple questions for you. Sure. Um, first of all, this is the penultimate epi- Is this the penultimate one, or is this the final one for the season? Uh, it's... I think it's the final. It's it, the final. It the final. Yeah. No, yeah. They, they they signed already. Or you're talking about the fifth episode. Yeah, the fifth, fifth episode is the final for season two. Yeah. Okay. But they've already um, signed on to do a third. Yep. And it's just like the, the ending of the first season. The first season, you didn't know who you'd see in the second season. I mean, it was open to interpretation fully whether or not you'd see Clementine or any of these other characters reemerge in season two. And this one feels the same way. The way that this uh, season ends, it ends in such a way that you don't know whether or not the third season will have anything to do with these characters at all. So it's kind of, you know, you can hope, you can wish, but the way that they ended this, they can go any direction. And the way they've been telling these stories, I'm excited to see whichever direction they go. But, yeah, it was the end. Episode 5 was. And uh, it was a hell of an okay. experience. I really enjoyed that. All right. Is that what the else? only question about uh, Yeah, Yeah, I guess it is. What else have you been playing? Uh, let me see. On my Vita, what have I been playing? Uh, my Vita hasn't been played in the last week. YouTube. But I've yeah. been playing YouTube on my Vita. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's probably it. Uh, I've been helping my daughter with her 3DS. She's been playing uh, her Mario her Mario, Land, Mario 3D World, and uh, she's she's really good at that for a four-year-old. Is but, that the uh, remake of the N64 game? No, that's Mario no, 64. A, okay. Yeah, that's, that's on just regular game? DS, yeah. Okay. That's Mario 64 DS. But she's playing the 3D, the Mario 3D World or 3D Land, the one that originally came out on the 3DS. Okay. Uh, but I'm looking forward to the Infamous game. I've been wanting to get back into Call of Duty Ghosts. So I'm going to try to do that some this week. Uh, and I've been trying to think of a game that we can all play together. I know everybody hears this every week. But uh, well, I want to see coming out in nine days. Yeah, well, <laughs> everything's <laughs> going on hold with the way that the world will be no more. Yeah. <laughs> So when that comes out, I guess that will be the story of that week. But uh, that's what I've been playing. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And uh, i got another extra 24 hours of free time, so I'm going to get some more gaming in tomorrow, too. Yeah. That's what awesome. What about you, Mr. Rabbit? What have you been playing? I have been playing Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition a lot. I really, really like this game. i got the box right here. Uh, have you guys checked this game out? This game came out like two years ago for the PC, and then uh, the expansion pack, Reaper of Souls, came out, and they repackaged it, put it out for the PS4, and it's phenomenal. Did you guys play this when it first came out on PC? No. I played it, I played it on uh, PC a little bit, and then I played it on PS3 when it was released on P- PS3. Oh, that's right, yep. I played it on there for like probably four months, and then I jumped off there, and I was going to play the... I was actually going to pick that version up, mm-hmm. but I'm thinking about picking up Madden instead. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so. this is the first time we speak of a sports game on the Beastly Thought Show. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, Diablo, I, I played it a lot when it came out on, uh, well, I played it on a Macintosh, and I liked it. Uh, but there were some real problems with it. Some of them they fixed for that PS3 version that you played, like the the shop. The problem with the original release was that they had this like item shop where you could buy and sell your items that you found in the game, and that created a, a situation where it was really hard to find really good loot in Diablo 3, which you know kind of ruins the point of playing a Diablo game because it's really all about the loot, in my opinion. Uh, they fixed that for the PS3 version, but I never played the PS3 version because it was still too new. I already owned the Mac version. Uh, so when Diablo Reaper of Souls came out, I figured, you know what, I'm going to pick this up. And i got to say, I like this game better on a console than I do on a, on a uh, computer. I like the one-to-one control with the thumbsticks. You know, you just move your guy around. You hold down buttons to attack. You know, it feels great. They, got a new, they have a new uh, uh, Crusader class, which is really fun to play. Uh, super powerful. He's got kind of like a witty humor, which is kind of missing from that game. Because I don't know if you remember 9 to 5. The, the story kind of sucks in that game. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah. Little, it's a little boring. <laughs> other than the cutscenes, like all the cutscenes look so amazing, but it's like everything else is kind of like bland. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm really having a good time with this. I played it for five hours today. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I've seen you on the whole time that I was on Last of Us. I'm like, wow, he's really getting down on that game, huh? Yeah, I was playing down in the living room, and the both the kids were there, and we were just like, we we're every time we got a loot chopper, we're like, ooh, ah, ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was real fun. <laughs> and then I've been playing uh, a lot of Call of Duty, obviously, with my new Scuff One controller, which I'm super excited about. Uh, it took me forever to get a scuff controller for my Xbox One, uh, and I really missed it after leaving the Xbox 360 and having it on the Xbox 360, and I am back to uh, scuff jumping and knifing, panic knifing, <laughs> back to my yeah. old asshole ways. <laughs> I got a question for you real quick. You, you, In your video, you mentioned about the, the thumbsticks. Yeah. You mentioned that like, when your thumbs start like sweating, it, it feels funny. Is mm-hmm. there other... Is there other is there like different thumbsticks that they offer you on their website? Yeah, you can uh, you can like choose the between the three. Have. Well, that's not true. I think you could choose between like eight, but there's three different styles. There's the domed one that you see here that kind of has the scuff logo on it. I don't know if the camera yep. focused on that. Um, yeah. There's the standard Xbox controller that you can just leave on there, and then there's also a concave one that looks similar to the 360 controller, kind of. Okay, with like little dots in it, kind of. Like yeah. The little nipples. Yeah. So, um, you, and you can get those in different lengths too. Like I got just a standard length. You can get a, a medium length and a longer length in just about every version of that. Uh, I like domed thumbsticks better than any other kind. Uh, but yeah, the way these are made is that they're they're just flat. They're really tacky if your thumb is dry, uh, but there's nowhere for the liquid to go if your thumb has any kind of sweat on it at all. So. That's a bummer, but it's, to be honest with you, I don't sweat that much, so I it doesn't really bother me that much. But if you have really right, sweaty right, hands, it's cool and collected. I got an air conditioner like literally a foot away from me. <laughs> that probably gets out hands reaching over. <laughs> I uh, I got something similar to those um, over. Well, I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I got the uh, thumb guards for the DualShock Four, and they're flat. Yeah. And they kind of remind me of the original PS3. Mm-hmm. Version because the PS4 version has a a ridge or like kind of like a circular pattern around the outside where your fingers can indent on the inside of the uh, the analogs. But these right. really remind me of the DualShock threes, and to me they feel a lot better. Uh, I prefer the dome. I I don't know. It's just something about it. It just is the most pleasing to me. I gotta think that's personal preference though, right? It's like I get, there's got to be people who prefer like the concave or the you know whatever. Ribbed, yeah. Ribbed for <laughs> our pleasure. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really having fun. It's the big deal is like the uh, paddles on the back. Once you get used to using these paddles, you're uh, you're simply a better Call of Duty player because you have more tools at your disposal. You can was, aim and jump watch, at the same time. Watching your video of your unboxing and, and your review of that scuff was the first time I'd ever seen a scuff controller in my life. Oh really? I was totally amazed when I saw the back of that controller. Those yeah. little ridges that you actually used to play with. I would have never thought that they would have came up with something like that, but it makes so much sense. Uh, how have you found your – has your gameplay – have you noticed an improvement? Uh, yes. Or is it, still, is it still something you're getting used to? Uh, I've gotten – I've pretty much gotten reused to it again. Knifing – so when I play Call of Duty, I play it on the tactical configuration, so my thumbstick, when I push it in, it's not knifing. It's, uh, Crouch. it's going prone, right, so I can uh, you know, duck down and shoot at the same time. So knifing just pretty much gets eliminated because I have to move my thumb off of the the thumbstick and hit the B button to knife. Now with having that paddle in the back, it's just I got to relearn to panic knife. Uh, but yeah. the bigger deal I think is actually the um, jumping and being able to aim. So you can you know you can jump around corners. You're up three feet higher than anybody expects you to be, especially people who aim kind of crotch level. They just shoot right under you, and you, you nail them, and you, you move on your way. It's basically <laughs> cheating. Yeah, well, I saw, I saw that in the, the comments section of your video. I think, But uh, they use that in competitive Call of Duty, too, though, the scope they controllers. They do. So I, I don't think it constitutes cheating. I think it's your own personal preference. You're still using your fingers and your motor functions to play the game. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, mm-hmm. unless the game is playing itself for you, I think that it's all you. So I, that's something I'm looking forward to getting. Now, I don't know. Do you know anything about the PS4 scuff? Is it made similar? Yep. Uh, I'll be ordering one of those, too. Uh, the difference between the PS4 one and the Xbox One one, trigger, that's trigger a lot of ones. They don't, yeah, they don't have trigger stops yet for the PS4. 
They also only have two paddles on the back currently for the PS4. Mm. I think those are the only two differences. Uh, Shark also makes a controller with paddles on the back. They're, I think, out of um, the UK. I'm not positive, though. It's Shark spelled with a Q. I'm going to order one of those for the PS4, too. They do offer trigger stops for the PS4, that Shark company. Sure, okay. And they're significantly cheaper than Scuff. Scuffs are really expensive. This was a two hundred and seven dollar controller. Oh my god! Yeah. Ooh, hurt yeah. me, why don't you? <laughs> yeah. So I'll be, uh, I'll definitely be investigating the Shark Company because it's way cheaper. Uh, although I'll be honest with you, I'm scared to spend a lot of money on a PlayStation Four controller because I've got two broken PlayStation Four controllers now. Really? Yeah. What yeah. happened? Uh, I got one that the uh, the right trigger, it just doesn't work anymore. Just my. Not- my buddy, uh, he plays a lot of FIFA, and he used that button to sprint. That's your sprint button. He holds it down all the time. He had uh, his broke. He had to take it apart, and the tooth was inside of his remote. He glued it like to the arm of the the trigger button. Mm-hmm. So he like he fixed it. He's playing with it right now. But it's like, come on, PlayStation, you need to fix your shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got another one where my right thumbstick. Uh, aside from the fact that the the rubber started to wear off, is it just doesn't respond 100% anymore. Uh, it was two separate controllers, too, so it's not like one controller I used all this time. So Jeez, I got some durability $70 issues. $70 a with pop. That. $70? I thought, are they 60 or 70 I paid 70 for mine. When are the they that expensive? Released. That's a lot. I, I honestly think it's the best controller ever made. Like I really enjoy the controller, but durability quality issues wise. are a pain in the ass. Yeah, quality is an issue. Yeah. Oh. So uh, hopefully they'll solve that issue as they continue. Like, you know, they'll kind of come out with Rev A, Rev B, Rev C, and kind of get rid of those quality issues, but kind of keep what's great about it. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. that's what that's what's kind of worrying me. I was going to buy uh, one of the new colors are released for the PS4 controllers. I was going to buy one, mm-hmm. but I'm like, is that the same quality as the one I already have? Why buy? Why buy one? Why spend seventy dollars or sixty dollars on that controller when it's going to become clapped out like the one I have? Yeah, that's you a bummer. I would think that by now, especially with the amount of complaints that Sony's gotten over this controller, that they've already gone in and started to make some changes. Hopefully, when these new controllers come out, at least the the thumbsticks won't rub off like you know warm rubber, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. they can you know add fixes to some of these issues that people are having. Uh, you kept those controllers. You didn't send them back, right, Mr. Rabbit? You just kept them? Yeah, I should send them back because they're still under warranty. Yeah, you got a year so of warranty. Yeah, it's, them not, back. it's not that I can't do it. It's just that I haven't done it and probably mm. won't, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I know four guys at work, and all theirs are the same problems. The triggers are breaking. The analogs are completely gone. I know two dudes that have plastic on both their analogs because they're gone. They're worn off. Yeah. Well, mine were like that. On on both of my controllers, the analogs were basically torn off, and then I realized my one-year-old had some plastic in her mouth. Oh. So she, yeah, she's been... <laughs> every day I'd come to work, and there'd be another piece gone. I'd be like, I didn't even play the game today. Yeah. And then I see Nina walking around with a piece of black rubber in her mouth. She's been chewing it off, so these made a lot of damn sense for me. <laughs> I I can't really blame Sony on that one. (laughs) So I was making up a list of kind of the news stories over the last two weeks, and then 9to5Gamer adds something at the end after I... And I'm like, I can't believe I forgot about the new 3DS. Like, that thing actually looks pretty cool to me. What do you guys think about that? Uh, I I think think it's it's good and bad. Good and bad. Yeah. No, 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 you go. Go be sleep. Go ahead. I, I think it's good and bad. Um, the reason I think it's good is because, you know, it has a built-in analog. It actually has a faster uh, processor. Mm-hmm. It is able to play games that the traditional 3DS is not able to play. But I feel like Nintendo keeps revolutionizing this system like every two years. Mm-hmm. And uh, the people who go out and buy the latest version of it, it's like it becomes like the iPhone. You buy yeah. the latest version of the 3DS, you get the 3DS Excel. And now, you know, they got a new version coming out, so yours becomes obsolete. It's able to play games that the, the other, older versions can't play. And so I feel like the, the 3DS adopters are the ones getting shafted, especially the people who love the 3DS and they want to continue to, uh, you know, grow their 3DS video game library. they got to consistently, every two years, buy a new 3DS. And I feel like 
that's a little wrong, but I, I'm happy about it. That analog looks very questionable to me. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the uh, Gee, like a, it looks like an eraser. It looks like a little tiny eraser from one of those little tiny old pencils. The old laptops. Remember the old laptops yeah, used to have those? Yeah, the mouse like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Uh, it, it must work. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, it, it lasts longer than the PS4 DualShock 4 analogs, because I can imagine <laughs> if that thing starts rubbing off, you're going to have major problems. But if it works fine, it'll probably take some getting used to, though, uh, using that as an analog and using the traditional analog. Can't imagine analog. playing a first-person shooter with that. I can't imagine. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, games like Resident Evil, you know, for 3DS, they might work really well with that. That'd be something I'm, I, I look forward to trying. I wanted to get the add-on for Resident Evil Revelations when I bought that game, but I got so used to playing without it, I said, the hell with that. But if I could have a system that had it built in, it, it, it'd probably be worth it. But I feel like since I already have a 3DS, what's the point? Now, yeah. if they start coming out with games that, you know, are you can see leaps and bounds ahead as far as the processing and, and the things that you're able to do, and you can't play on the 3DSs that are out now, then yeah, maybe. But, uh, you know, they, they added the ability to use the Amiibos. Or, or Amiibos or I, I think those are yeah, the names of the Ami toys. Amiibos. You can sit them right on top of the new 3DS and scan them into your game. So they, they added some few a few new things to it that might make it, uh, you know, more um, exciting or, or, or worth the purchase to some buyers. But for me right now, probably not until they come up with a game that's a must-have game that only works on the new 3DS. Well, what are your thoughts, Mr. 9 to 5? Yeah, I'm uh, just on my screen, I'm just showing pictures of it from uh, Kotaku. Oh, yeah, and it comes in two sizes, too. So it comes in the traditional regular 3DS size and the 3DS XL size, and it's just called the new 3DS. I'm happy they named it that instead of the 3DS Wii. 3DS 2? <laughs> Wii, Wii new <laughs> IU. You know? The i3DS? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks good. That that analog looks iffy. And uh, I guess some people out there are going to get it. There's some big Nintendo fans, like Apple fans, who will go every year and get the new iPhone, no matter what. So some people will pick it up. Some people won't see the value in it. I personally don't see the value right now until they make a game for it that only works for that version of the 3DS versus the ones that are out now. Yeah. What did you think about it, 9 to 5? Um, my opinion on it is I feel bad for the people that, like, bought the XL because they came out with the XL and then they came out with this one. The people that bought the XL, the XL, by the time this re is released, is probably going to be about a year old Yep. within the, within the time range. Cause I have, really? I have, a, I have a red XL. I bought it the day it came out. So it's probably, I think it maybe, it's maybe it's about a year. It's a, probably about a year old right now. It's probably going to be about a year and a half yeah. from when this one comes out. So I feel bad for those people. Mm -hmm. I had the original 3DS too, and then I upgraded to the XL when it came out. The the two things I think are really cool about it is is it takes a micro SD instead of a normal SD or like some weird proprietary like the Vita, which the the Vita is dumb for that. <laughs> Even on the slim model, that's dumb. Why wouldn't you switch that? Um, one of the cool things about it is is that the C stick is gonna work extremely well with Smash. Like, people that play Smash Brothers are going to eat that up because that is their new C-stick for dodging and stuff. Oh. And, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of the people that are complaining about the C-stick, think about how many um, first-person shooters are on the 3DS. None. You know what I'm saying? There's not a, uh, a first-person shooter on there. So you won't yeah. really use it in that aspect. It's going to be more so for camera changes and angles and stuff like that. That Which, just shows to show what kind of games I play, I guess. I, and yeah, the pictures, no, no. I, the pictures they show are Super Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a big problem to me is they have Xenoblade Chronicles coming out. That yep. can only be played on that system. That can't be played on the on the older models. Which, yes, that game's going to sell, but it's not going to sell extremely good in America. Like Japan, people are going to eat that up. Yeah, like they eat up Monster them. Hunter and stuff like that. You know. But when it comes to the American market, it's like people aren't going to give a damn about Xenoblade Chronicles. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't know. I think it's the best, one of the best RPGs made for sure. For sure, last gen, it's probably one of the best. But I don't know. I just I, I think it's stupid because you're you're making people that really want these games have to go buy the new system to play those games. Yeah. You're you're cutting your your fan market in half. Not to mention you're probably going to lose a lot of your fans by being like, oh, you have to have this version. 
unless it is extremely that much better than the normal 3DS, I don't see a lot of people jumping on board and being okay with it. Do you guys remember the DS Lite that they released uh, right before the yeah. 3DS that had a better yeah. processor and supposedly developers could take advantage? I don't remember much of any games getting developed for that thing. Because you're, you're cutting your market so slim at that point. Like, why not develop for everybody who has a 3DS as opposed to just people who have the new 3DS? The thing for me, though, that's, that makes this whole thing weird is Nintendo comes out with a new 3DS. 3DS, of course, is the, one of their biggest selling handhelds of all time. Why wouldn't they put that effort into doing something with the Wii U so it could be more on par with these competitors? You know, uh, I, add more processing power to the Wii U so the games like Watch Dogs, these new games on PS4 and Xbox One could be ported over to the newer Wii U rather than do this 3DS. Well, I'm I mean, still holding out hope for that fusion idea. I think the yeah. idea is, is definitely going to happen one day, but I just think that that's really where Nintendo's effort should be poured into right now because they're losing tremendously in, in the console market space. Of course, they're the gods when it comes to handhelds. They already got that. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, trying to compete against Nintendo in the handheld market is a lost cause. So it's something they already own. Rather than try to re-monopolize on something they already have the monopoly on, they need to put their real effort into gaining foot, uh, gaining leverage in the, the home console space because the Wii U just isn't competing with the, the PS4 and the Xbox One as far as hardware and as far as processing. And so they're adding this new processing power to the 3DS. They could have been doing the same thing with the Wii U and giving these third-party developers the opportunity to, to port games over to the Wii U, to the new Wii U. I just think that that was a missed opportunity. I don't feel as negative about this as you guys do. I, I really like it. I especially like the one that kind of has that, uh, like the yellow, red, green, and blue yeah. Uh, yeah. buttons yeah, to it. I mean, it's faces colorful. Off, yeah. I really those like are, that. It's got two extra shoulder buttons. Yeah. I like that it's got a new control stick on the right-hand side. I, I like this. I, I like everything about this. Uh, I understand that the 3DS XL is only a year old. I actually really like my 3DS XL. It's one of yeah. the silver ones with Mario and Luigi on it. I think oh, you got like uh, cool. the, the yeah. Mario and Luigi RPG game out with it? What is it? Uh... I can't remember something. what it's called. The game something, was not good. Three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the game was not good. I bought it because I, I just thought the 3DS XL looked cool. And you know there will be special editions of these ones, too. Yeah, they I'm not, actually, I'm not they actually have They actually have interchangeable face plates on them. Oh, and that's you can, cool. You can that's buy only for the smaller plates. version, though. Yep, all the, only the smaller version. You are right, Beasley. Oh, okay. I like the bigger version. It's easier on my old man eyes. And your hands. Yeah. Your hands. If you have huge damn hands, man, those things suck. <laughs> it can't be any worse than the PS Vita. That thing is yeah. a goddamn torture device. Yeah. It is not, I was trying to play Diablo on it. Oh no, that's not happening. <laughs> I put a, I put a grip. I, I put a grip like protection thing on mine. It yeah. does make it not as bad. Yeah, not but as still bad, horrible. but still not good. I saw a Nerf one that might be okay. I mean, that's I might actually try that really out. good. The Nerf that's one, the one is one good. My son, I got my son that one, and that's very comfortable. Believe I me, I might try that one. It, it it contours your hands really well. And and let me just end on the 3ds note saying yeah. this: I don't feel really down about the new 3ds, Briar. I just feel like why go through all this extra effort for a new 3DS when it's something you already have the monopoly in. Yeah. You already yeah. own this space. You really don't have any competition when it comes to handheld spaces. I mean, if you compare the 3DS to the PlayStation Vita or any other handheld, the 3DS kills them all by leaps and bounds. I think the 3DS has 80 million sold. Okay, yeah. that's just the same <laughs> amount as, yeah, the same amount as the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And look at the life, the difference in, in lifespan. So the 3DS is a huge thing. Why go through that again when you can really put some of that effort into breathing new life into the, the, the Wii U? Now, the Wii U, I think, is going to do a lot better now because of the games that have been announced. But if they also put this kind of effort in revolutionizing that console, hey, this new Wii U is more on par with these next-gen consoles. It's able to do things that the old Wii U couldn't. That would be you know, more appealing to people who are home console console gamers. And uh, I think that you know that would have been probably a better choice than you know, redoing something you already own. Well, you're not getting a new Wii U, but you can pre-order 12 Nintendo Amiibo figurines. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? For $12.99 a piece, too. That's that's crazy. Yeah, but I'll come on. Pick, you're, yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably <laughs> pick up, like, four of them just to check them out, you know, and be like, all right, yeah, that is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I, I can definitely. play a character in, in, in Mario Kart, play him in Smash Brothers, play him in whatever other games come out. I'm all for it. Yeah. I, I really like some of them, actually. The the Mario one is good. The Link one is good. Uh, there were The Samus one is pretty good. They the got Don- weird Don- ones, like Don- the Don- cool Girl. Too. Yeah, and uh, they have the the guy from Animal Crossing. What the hell's his name? But uh, yeah, it look it looks it look they look cool. They got a great design to them. It's not like something that's really corny that when you look at it on your shelf, you're gonna be like, oh, that's made cheap. So yeah, it, it does look good. I don't know if I'll even play the games that come. That my thing is, is if I could take my character and have him in Smash Brothers, he could beat the shit out of you, and then I could put him in Mario Kart and race. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. That's actually pretty dope. Yeah. And you level up the figurines, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's is like it's kind of in the same same eyes as Skylanders. Skylanders is almost the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my Skylanders kids were big into Skylanders. Oh, they are. How how do you guys think these amiibos are actually going to do though? You're I'm going to pre-order through. the ones I want because I'm convinced they'll be sold out right off the bat. Yep. Yep. It's going to I think it's going to be along the same lines as Skylanders and it's going to take a while for people to really jump on board and see what it, see what it's about because the only games that they announced so far for them is Smash Finished. and uh, Mario Kart. That so, Yoshi so, Yarn game too will work with it, I think. Oh, that's that game looks amazing. But mm-hmm. yeah, that'll be cool if that if that works with that too. But, I mean, yeah, if, you, if you think about it, Nintendo's first party games is like the number one games in the world as far as first party games. To have those characters made into, into characters and actually be quality characters, that's not something you see very often. You don't walk into the toy store and see an awesome ass Mario or Link figure. No. It's just yeah. something we don't see because they're owned by Nintendo. So this is the opportunity for especially us older guys who've been playing these games for years to have pretty slick, you know, characters that sit up in in the shrines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> speaking speaking of Link, he'll be in um the new Mario Kart DLC too. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've released DLC. It's actually a good deal. It's 12.99 and you get eight wait, you get 16 tracks, uh eight carts and six characters and Link is one of the characters. That's a and good you deal. Also get, like you oh, also get an F0. You, you get an F0 level, an Excite bike level. You get like the, the the DLC is amazing for that game. I bought it just because the Mercedes cars came out last yeah, week. Yeah, put Link in a Mercedes. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> it's like it's, it's like they're looking in my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you also get uh, Yoshi in seven different colors and Shy Guy in seven different colors if you buy them now, if you like pre-order them. So. Wow. That's cool. Well, hopefully they sell a lot of Amiibo characters in DLC because they're planning on laying off about 320 people in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, a bummer. Yeah. That's like one of the first times you hear that Nintendo laying off. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say that. That's, that's one like country trending never thing. Heard about. So, that's depressing news. Yeah, it's like the, the new trend <laughs> is to lay off people, you know? Uh, if you're a big name in the video game space, lay off 300 employees, or you know, just to get get out there. It's terrible news for the people who work for Nintendo. It's in in Europe, right? Nintendo Europe. Yeah, Nintendo Europe. I, I'm wondering why, you know, uh, especially now when when Nintendo is trying so hard to regain its footing and selling more consoles, and they've announced all these new games. Maybe the Europeans aren't doing things the way they weren't done in Japan. They haven't really said yet. They said reorganizing, which is what everybody says when they're doing layoffs. Hmm. Well, good good luck to all those affected in this layoff. Yeah, hopefully they find jobs quick. Um, what else we got for today? Oh, 9 to 5, you put in the notes DDoS attack. Now, are you referring to the mass DDoS attacks across the Internet, like things like Xbox Live, Sony PlayStation Store, uh, yeah, Twitch? Yeah. Uh... I know Blizzard got a bunch of them. Blizzard, I know, yeah. like, there's a there's a bunch of uh, online uh, MMO type games that got them too. Yeah. What's so, up? Why do people ruin our fun? I, <laughs> I don't I don't get it either. Like it's like like my buddy said. He goes, "You're not hurting anybody, but the people that actually game. Like you're hurting the gamers more than the companies. You know? Right. Like, it's not like you're costing them any money. The, yep. The only person that's catching the flack is the people that pay for these services that aren't able to use them, you know? Yeah, I need Call and of Duty gameplays, guys. You can't take Xbox Live down. <laughs> I mean, and, and on top of that, if you idiots are going to do a DDoS, DDoS attack, don't do it on the weekend, okay? I mean, that's <laughs> the only time people get a chance to play the damn games, people who work 
nine to fives. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I had to like, go outside and I got sunburnt. It was awful. <laughs> this is crap. We actually got to do physical activities. It's bullshit. That's what I told my buddy. He's like, he's like, PlayStation Network's now. We're not playing Battlefield today. And I was like, well, I'm going to dust off the Xbox and play uh, Titanfall DLC. So. It's, and it worked, it worked perfectly fine. I didn't have a problem with my Xbox. Everyone was talking about that they were getting it too. I was like, no, dude. I was signed in in a, in a party chat. Yeah, I didn't hear anything about time. I didn't hear anything about Xbox uh, Xbox Live getting a DDoS attack. Uh, I, I'm well aware of Sony's attack that happened last Saturday, um, and uh, the, the, a group took responsibility for the attack, and they actually uh, caused I forget which airline it was, but yeah, Sony, uh, Sony Computer Entertainment uh, uh, manager or president or whatever he was on the plane, and they forced the plane down with a wow. bomb threat. So uh, you must really hate Sony. I mean, whoever's doing this, but I didn't hear anything about Microsoft. Is that something you heard, Briar Rabbit? Uh, no, I I had briefly heard that a bunch of places, so I threw out Microsoft. I was uninformed. Oh, okay. No, me being no, ignorant. there there was, was there was a, there was a list. Microsoft was on their list, but they said they actually tweeted out uh, yesterday saying props to Microsoft on their network because we tried all we could to turn it down. Like, yeah, oh, good shit. Their core so, competency. You want a yeah. good network. I mean, they're the number yeah. one guys you go to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly. If if you didn't expect that to like Microsoft to handle all that, they would. They would have. They got crazy amounts of servers though, and money. Yeah, and the know-how. I mean, they mm-hmm. they do it. That's if you think gaming is their main business, you got another thing coming. Oh no, it's PCs <laughs> and security. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah uh, that's something I actually said in one of my videos. That Sony needs to learn. Microsoft's learning a lot from Sony. I mean, uh, with the games of gold, they got a lot more stuff going with games of gold now than they used to. Mm-hmm. Really good games. And so they're learning from Sony. Sony needs to definitely take a page out of their book when it comes to security. Now, I know DDoS attacks aren't really hacks. This is clarified to me by Not Too Nerdy. It, not Too yeah. Nerdy is not here <laughs> this week, guys. He's at PAX. Um, but uh, he, uh, he explained to me that this really isn't a hack. It's just basically tricking your servers into thinking they're overloaded with traffic. But there's got to be ways to be aware of this and to, and to stop it in the future. And hopefully Sony will pick up and learn a little something from Microsoft in the future. There are. It's, I don't think any of them are cheap, though. But, I mean, this is just, this is just one of the small things. I, I don't know if you guys want to talk about this, but there's been all sorts of, like, crazy stuff that gamers are doing to other gamers going on in the last two weeks. You guys see that kid get swatted while he was live streaming? Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, he, Counter-Strike. he's playing Counter Strike online. I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, you know, he looks over to his side. He's like, "I think somebody's swatting me." And the next thing you know, there's about five guys with AR-15 assault rifles in his office telling him to get down on the ground. You know, seriously? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you guys hear about? There's a yeah. There's a big article about it. Yeah, it's all over the news because they. I'll be honest with you. It looked like the uh, cops might have used a little bit of excessive force for, uh, you know, a prank phone call. Um, there, there was also the uh, news report of uh, what's his name, blonde kid who does uh, Call of Duty videos, got swatted, and he actually had pot in his house, and he he got arrested on felony charges. I think. Uh, you know, no, he had pot in his house. Yeah, <laughs> different guy, different guy. Uh, God, I can't remember his name. Oh, white boy, Seventh Street. Damn. That's crazy, yeah. Man. Okay, uh, the first thing, the first thing the girl, we need to do, guys, is you guys need to give me your addresses. Okay, but go ahead. Uh, then there was the news <laughs> about uh, the girl who she was dating somebody from Kotaku, and she's also an independent uh, game developer. Yeah, a journalist oh, yeah. from Kotaku. And uh, the internet exploded about this. Now, you can definitely look at maybe there's some inappropriate activity here. Uh, between journalists and independent game developers, but to threaten people's lives and to put out their, you know, their addresses, I mean, people had to leave their homes because of the amount of threats they're getting. Like all of these things, man, people are gonna get hurt. Like this is not joking around. This is not kid stuff. This is not funny stuff. This is like real. Like you're gonna get somebody hurt. Stuff, you know, and it's it's unacceptable. Yeah. Like, I don't, well, I, don't, I mean, what can be done, though? I mean, there's going to be that element of immaturity and foolishness. This is the Internet. 
And when you're playing a game online and you're dealing with people who know how to script or hack, they're going to be able to, they're privy to knowledge that a lot of people aren't. And, and when you mix that negative environment or the negative aspect of the environment with technology, you get bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and nothing will stop it. I mean, people are going to continue to do this kind of stuff. It's going to actually become worse as more and more people learn how to do these types of things. Well, you know what's going to happen is eventually the lawmakers are going to have to yep. are going to have to pass laws to you know, help the police. And then once again, we're going to just lose a little bit of freedom because they're not going to do it well because they don't understand this stuff at all. Yep. You know, the guys in Congress do not understand technology or the Internet at all. Or how it works. Yeah. So they're going to make some stupid law, and then like, <sighs> it's like trying to set up my mom's smartphone. <laughs> don't don't let it get you, Brian. I see you huffing and puffing. It's going to be all right. I feel the same. You know, I feel the same way. I mean, <laughs> they can't relate to real people. I understand. Beasley's all about fucking over the man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn right. I feel like Sean of the Sean uh, Sean of the Dead. Fuck the man. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot stand the government that governs this this nation. You will not support that that chair lobby. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Anti chair lobby 2014. Damn right. <laughs> so uh, Titanfall is getting some new modes. You guys hear about this? Nine to five. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually wrote a big article about it. I actually read a big article about it yesterday or no Friday at work. I read about it. And it's 8v8, no Titans, which is kind of cool, but... That's awesome. In my eyes, it's it's taking away what Titanfall is, you know? <laughs> not, <laughs> but not you're really, trying though, so hard because, to not become Titanfall. Well, it, it really isn't taking it away because it's just a mode. You can always play Titanfall, but for people who want more of a Call of Duty experience... Now, I'm, I'm guessing there's no Titans and no bots in this 8v8? Yep. No bots, so, yep, shit. no bots, no Titans. That's, that's, for, that's for everybody who complained about Titanfall initially... Want it? They want the actual human-on-human -human experience, that that competitive nature. I know that that person I killed is an actual real person. No, you know, titans, no bots, just you versus me. I think that's a great thing for Titanfall. It's nothing wrong with adding to something you already have. It's not like they're really taking away what made Titanfall Titanfall. They're just adding something else for that probably minority of people who play the game who want to play it and experience it in a different way. The only problem I have with these type of modes in Titanfall is they're timed. Like, oh, they'll put really? on the mode, have it timed, and then they'll take that away and add a different mode. Like, if you notice now, Briar, if you go on Titanfall, I know you probably haven't in a long time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, it says it says whatever mode they added before, um, the, the gun mode, whatever the hell that is. If you go into it, it says available for this amount of time. And then it says replaced with whatever the new mode is called. I forget the name oh, of the sucks. new mode that they're releasing. So you're not going to end up with all of them. It's almost like they're like, they don't want to release it as DLC, but they're doing it as a time type of deal. Yeah. It's a carousel constantly going around and you get something. Yep. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, which I so wish they would just extend, uh, expand the list of modes. You know, like add in, whatever mode you're going to add in, leave it there. Don't do it to the timed shit or available for this amount of time or that amount of time. But when you only yeah. have 14 players, you got to keep those game modes. <laughs> it's true. I know I didn't just hear you say that. <laughs> 14 players. 13 now. Oh, it's, stop playing. It's, it's, I, I it's have really the same sad. problem in Call of Duty Ghost this year. I mean, it's, it's rough all around, man. It's rough all around. <laughs> well, until next month. You think this Call of Duty is going to help? You think there's going to be a lot of people jumping on this Call of Duty for yeah. both consoles, for that matter? Yeah. Like, I know, I know yeah. PlayStation, there's a lot of systems. I get that. There's 10 million, so yeah. you'll have the amount of people picking it up, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. You know, they're still releasing it on all four systems, so the player base is going to be split up still until until we really get kind of off of those 360 and PS3s. The player base is split up. Xbox One playing on the Xbox One is kind of a rough experience. You know, mm. you get a lot of lag playing Call of Duty on the Xbox One because I'll play free for all and there'll be 400 people playing. You know, and oh, wow. it's just not possible to get like you know that many people like localized with good enough internet connections to each other to not have lag. PlayStation 4 is better because there's more players on PlayStation 4, but it's rough. It's rough all around, to be honest with you. It's mm -hmm. 
we need we need more people playing these games to have better internet connections all around. Hmm. This I got a question for you real quick. Is there a reason why you picked Scuff on the Xbox One versus the PS4? Um, for that yeah, reason, I know that reason that brought that brought it up in my mind. I can answer. That. I can tell you why he did. I'm going to answer for him because the, the Call of Duty DLC comes to the Xbox One first. And no, so, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason is is because there's a feature on the scuffs that you can remap these paddles. Mm -hmm. uh, when they first released the scuff one, it wasn't available. I had waited until it was available, and I'm doing the same thing with the four okay. case, the PlayStation 4 version. I don't want to buy the scuff controller if I can't remap these on my own because if I, I want this to be melee in every game, not you know reload in one game and melee in another. Yeah. So, so how yeah. are you able to remap it? Do you plug it into your computer, open an app, and then no, do it's melee? bizarre, no. man. It's got this little magnet that goes on the back here. You so see, you stick a I magnet on it. it, and then you just hold the two buttons that you want to be the same. Wow. Yeah, it's weird. Like, it's cool, but I said in my review, I'm like, a button would have been better, probably. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the original PS4 scuff doesn't allow you to map buttons, and you're waiting for them to release right. one that allows you to do that. And That's you said right. the, shark, the Shark is a similar controller as well? Yeah, but doesn't do the button remapping. Okay. You have to order it the way you want it. All right. Wow. That might be something for me to look into and save 50 or 60 bucks and get my uh, customized... Uh, tactical PS4 controller. Yeah, they they they're nice. You know, it's uh, I haven't used the Shark one, but I'll be ordering one soon because uh, I definitely want to see how that adds up because it's a lot cheaper than the Scott. Mm. And uh, that's Call of Duty all day. And speaking of Call of Duty, I uh, see we got in our notes here. If you pre-order Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, you get legendary armor shaders. Yeah, and Destiny. Really? Yeah. So if you pre-order Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. When you play Destiny, you get some DLC that gives you, I think, uh, gunmetal gray and uh, some kind of goldish, orangish, goldish color. Uh, I'm guessing you can this color, is use the color. No, this is for both. You can use it to color your legendary armor in Destiny. So you got to ah. get that. You got to get the armor that can be colored. Uh, but apparently. You're gonna be able to get different colors. <laughs> that was actually the real take takeaway for me. It was that, well, that's cool that they're giving us like something for pre-order on both games. Good on Activision. You know, it makes sense. Uh, but how much am I gonna have to pay for all these colors in Destiny? <laughs> like, because you know there's gonna be more colors available. If, yeah. You know, like microtransaction. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, I have to be worried. To me, I'm I'm in awe right now that Call of Duty and Destiny would actually be working together in that way. Well, it's Activision. They're both owned okay. by Activision. Okay. You know, so they're not owned by Activision, but they're both being published by published Activision. By Activision. Okay. And all it is, it's not super special DLC. It's literally just colors. You'll be able to use these colors when you color your legendary armor in Destiny. Like if you get armor that can you can paint, then these are two more colors that will be added to your palette. Oh, that, I don't know if that's worth it. <laughs> I mean, my stuff is pre-ordered anyway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so maybe that's what, what I said. If, like, oh, all right. What if somebody has one pre-ordered on one system and the other pre-ordered on another system? You know what I, I'm saying? Like, I'm sure there's very few people out there, but a lot of people play Destiny. They get it on the PS4 for the DLC, you know, for the exclusive stuff, and then mm -hmm. they would get Call of Duty because they're getting the DLC early. Does that transfer over via system? My guess you know is it Because usually matter. they're anal about that. My guess is it won't matter. Because uh, yeah. when I did, for the beta, I did all that stuff through Bungie.net, not through my... Oh, uh, yeah, yep, my, you're right, you're right. Xbox or my uh, PlayStation. So mm. my, my guess is it won't matter. Uh, also, in my experience, uh, you can usually just call up GameStop and get a code. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah actually, pre Beastly, you taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> Beastly Gamer taught me that, actually. <laughs> what do you mean, I pre-ordered it? I didn't even have to explain anything. Hey, I lost my code. Can you give me another one? Yeah, sure. sure. Here. <laughs> Thank you. That was pretty slick. Yeah, we both happened to lose our stuff, and so I found out and shared that information. Uh, we got nine nine days left, guys. I am so psyched. I am so psyched. Nine days. Yeah. I haven't been excited for a game in a long time. You better get all the other gaming in that you can get. 
you know, Ultimate Evil Edition, all that stuff has to end in nine days. Mm-hmm. Everything That's I'm playing is going to end in nine days. I think I want to quit my job. That's an idea. I'm trying to move That's in solid. on my dad or something. That's good thinking. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, why, that's why I probably went through, what, I went through my whole gaming library, and I'm like, I have to beat this game, this game, this game, this game. Like, I beat uh, Wolfenstein. <laughs> I beat, like, every damn game that I never thought I would play, I beat. You guys you know, doing midnight launches? You could be there at midnight? That's on your way home from work, right, Beasley? Yeah, I'll be on my way home. I, you yeah. know what? I might just do I, I probably will. I think I'm gonna to pick mine up. Uh, I might it's leave across the street from my work, so I'll be I'll be going back up there after work and picking it up because I don't work the next day. So, yeah. Man, you got the best of both worlds. You got gaming coworkers and a game yeah. store across the street from a BMW dealership. No, Damn. no, it's 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 horrible though because my boss is like, "What day is he taking off for?" And he'll look and he'll be like, "Fuck, Call of Duty comes out that day." <laughs> They're like, "No, what I'm taking off for?" So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because your boss knows because he's gonna be doing the same thing. Yeah. yeah, Activision has a pretty good track record about getting those servers up and running correctly day one too. So hopefully we won't have any issues. I remember getting uh, Halo Three day one, and I couldn't play it all day, and I had taken the day off. And there's what? been multiple times like that since then. Is, are their servers different? Are there uh, are there multiplayer versus the campaign co-op servers different, or is that the same? I don't know. I don't really I would know. think that they're working in tandem somehow, because it's it doesn't take a very long time to switch. You know, you could switch, leave a multiplayer game in the Crucible, go to a planet, and it's almost seamless. You know, um, so I'm, I'm guessing they're working in tandem on some level. But I'm trying to find, I'm trying to see how I'm going to find the time that I need to invest into this game. I really am. I'm going to quit, guys. <laughs> uh, <take> all my <laughs> stuff. No, I, I think you're on the right track here. Yeah, I mean, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, okay? Yeah, it's fold. time to fold. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. I didn't like you bitches anyway. Yeah, hey, fuck this shit. Give me a twin-size bed in one room, four kids and a wife and destiny. It's all I need. Honey, I'm bringing the 60-inch into the bedroom. Don't go knocking. Sit it next to the 40-inch. <laughs> you might want to work some overtime, too, just saying. Damn it. <laughs> It's going to be insane. Have you guys been reading any about the uh, raid system? Like kind of the end game stuff? No, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't. You guys enlighten me and enlighten our viewers. So well, I read one article. Uh, Luke Smith. You guys remember Luke Smith? He used to be with uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly like way back when. And uh, when Remember 1up.com? Yeah. He used to be with those guys. And uh, he, he's been working for Bungie for, I bet, probably 10 years now. Damn. And uh, he was getting interviewed, and he was talking about the end game stuff, and he was talking about how they had four groups of pro gamers. These are like competitive gamers come to this, come to Bungie, and test out the raid system. And they played this one raid. Of the four groups, I believe one group actually made it all the way through the raid, and um, they had all weekend to do it. What? Yeah, one group. Beat the raid, but had to be helped through like a middle boss p- portion, and two gr- two groups didn't make it at all, and one group just gave up and started playing strike missions instead. <laughs> so wow. it's gonna be tough. I think we can do it. Oh yeah, I mean, with beastly gaming. Yeah, shit, fusion rifle gamer. baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's gonna be tough, and which makes me happy to be honest with you. Like I, I I'm ready for a challenge with that game. Some of the well, stuff at the beginning is pretty easy, you know? Well, it must be put together very well for the fact that you got actual human players and it's that hard. Yeah. You know, usually if a first-person shooter is hard, it's because of the difficulty of the way the game is set up. But usually you can get you can get around that if there's more than one human player. Yeah, six people. But, six shit. Six people playing co- cooperatively, awesome. having trouble. That's all of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole BC Thoughts game. Yeah. We can do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I wish the whole game was like that, but it's cool that they offer that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, because the looking, raids are going to be what? Uh, are these going to be kind of random occurrences and things like that, or do you just go and do a raid? I don't think they've they've talked about that yet, though. Damn. Uh, they have said that you'll be able to keep a raid going for up to a week, and that every Tuesday there will be a weekly reset. So any progress you've made in a raid with your group. Will be reset on Tuesday. Because, because, okay. 
Because they're claiming the raid could go anywhere from an hour to three hours, depending on the raid that you're doing. So, and then they, they, they're saying, if you don't, I'm assuming what it is, is they're giving you a week to complete that raid, and then after that, within a week, there's going to be a new one posted. So then you're going to be able to do that one. Okay. Well, they do that with uh, us. Final Fantasy um, Realm Reborn, it does the same thing. The, mm -hmm. It's the same exact setup, yes. I can't wait for this game. Man. I am have completely you? amped for it. Well, how come you, you haven't played uh, Final Fantasy? You guys played that yet? I haven't. I uh, I don't like to pay to play a game. That's my that's problem. The, that's that why I haven't bought it. Yep. When they make it free, it's mine. I have what? never enjoyed a Final Fantasy game. What? I don't like. Hey. It. I think I think <laughs> no. I think you would like um, Realm Reborn because it's not it's not your typical RPG made by Final Fantasy people. Like it's not turn based. It's like it's more action adventure feel to it. You talking about and like it, thirteen or something? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like thirteen, only way better. But my my okay. my oldest brother already platinumed it. He's he's a, a junkie for that shit. So so Briar, you know, I gotta ask you because I gotta see if our hearts are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't like the traditional JRPG format of the the. Uh, uh, I've played other JRPGs and loved them. Uh, Fantasy Star, I used to love on the Sega Genesis. Uh, I've played a bunch that of them. That was amazing. Um, but like, and really specifically, I'm talking about like Final Fantasy VII. <gasps> forward. Because yep. like Final Fantasy II, I really enjoyed. He's he, he and I think you would like if Realm Reborn is ever free and you can try it out, at least try it out because I think you would dig it. A lot of people hate the turn-based feel of any RPG, which which I I can I can see it. It's it's very um, uh, repetitive and kind of boring to people that aren't into that style of game. Yeah. The stories never hooked me either in, in huh. Final Fantasy. They're so melodramatic. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just broke his heart. <laughs> the thoughts and, and feelings of Briar Rabbit are not reflected by the two gamer. I know there's a lot. I know of you it's guys not a popular there. opinion, but oh my god, Final Fantasy VII was one of one of the best games of all time to me. It just it's funny how gamers are, you know, uh, and that's what makes this whole thing great. There are people who probably think Final Fantasy is absolute crap. Me personally, I don't uh, think I it's think, crap. I just didn't enjoy it. Yeah, well, it's not for me. It's like yeah, an anime. It's not, I don't enjoy type. anime. Oh, okay. Well, it's nobody's perfect, my Rabbit. Um, I know. Because <laughs> uh, I love anime too, but Final Fantasy VII, I love the story. I love the world. I love the the story that was told and the way that they presented it. I thought it was amazing. Uh, I even liked Final Fantasy VIII. And that there was very melodramatic. It was like watching Melrose Place or something. It was just ridiculous. But I enjoyed it overall. I, I didn't like Final Fantasy XIII, believe it or not. Um, and uh, it's just it's funny how how gamers are. You guys sound off in the comment section. Is Final Fantasy VII a good game, or is it just not fun? Let us know. It's it's good. It's not as good as Nino Cooney though, but it's good. It's good. It still is good. Yeah. yeah well, if Nino Cooney Skies was of Arcadia, game, that was a good game. Which one? <laughs> Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia. Oh yeah, that was damn good. Yeah. But see, the, th the thing is, it, it'd be real hard for me to, to, and I know this is off subject totally. I'm going out in left field. For for us to uh, really rate Final Fantasy VII against Nino Cooney, it is a it's... little unfair because yep, time. Time. If you look at yep. Final Fantasy VII, you're like, get out of here. This looks like crap. But if it was <laughs> made, you know, in the same graphical style as as Nino Cooney, it may have held up. But Studio Ghibli is like one of the best studios when it comes to weaving stories, you know, as well. So yeah. you know, they, they're good on the anime front, and they're good in the video game front, obviously with Nino Cooney. So who knows? But to me, it's really much harder to gauge those two versus one another. It'd be easier to do something like uh, I'm trying to remember the damn it, I can't think of the name. You can do um, Final it like Fantasy VII like looked stupefyingly good when it came out. I mean, it was yes. stunningly good. Yeah. Oh, amazing. It was yeah. the best looking game. <laughs> it was just awesome. <laughs> I didn't you know. Uh, Parasite Eve and Final Fantasy. A lot of people were playing the same those games at the same time. Yeah. I I, I just really loved it, and uh, I don't like people who didn't love it. I'm just I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Oh, I, this is a, a really good subject, Briar, and uh, I want to get into this. Uh, the video, the biggest video game flops of all time. Oh yeah, okay. So th this was uh, an article I found on GamesBeat. Uh, it's a like a division of VentureBeat, the website. So I, I'll read you guys the list, 
okay? Tell me how many you've played. <laughs> the first I'm one afraid. is PlayStation Home. Yeah, I played it. Yeah, everybody check that out, right? This, yeah. They're just it shutting that down now. You say what now? They're just shutting that down now. Really? It's going to yeah. be shut down. Yeah. Uh, Apparently, I PlayStation Home. What's that? I remember when it first came out, I would go into it just to go into the theater uh-huh. and watch the trailers for new games or movies or music videos. I thought that was really revolutionary to go into a theater with a bunch of idiots that you didn't know, mm-hmm. talk shit to them, and sit <laughs> in the chair and watch trailers or watch parts of movies. They actually uh, got that to the point where you could actually watch movies in the theater. Really? I went into it probably, uh, I want to say, maybe a year ago just to walk around and, and seeing where it came from to where it has become was amazing, but obviously it doesn't have enough foothold to shut yeah. it down. Did you I, buy I any couches, 9to5 Gamer? Did you furnish I your bought, apartment? I did, yeah, I believe it or not, I did. I'm a sexy-ass <laughs> chick. The only thing I ever did in there is before Killzone came out, Killzone 3, yeah. was to go in there and play that little stupid shooting game and it unlocked points yeah. for the game. That's oh, the really? only thing I did. Yeah, a nice little arcade in there, too. The you know, you only memory I really have of it is that it was uh, a similar-looking icon, and it was right next to the PlayStation Store. Yeah. So the only time I ever opened PlayStation Home was when I was trying to open the PlayStation Store, and I would go, shit, because it took you like three forever. minutes just, to get yeah. out of it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of right up there with the trackpad and the share button. Yeah. All right, the next one, yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> like that. Uh, the next one is a little bit older. This was, okay, it's the Sega Channel. Do you guys remember the Sega Channel? No. No. Okay, so this was an add-on device made by Scientific Atlanta. You guys might know that name because they probably made your cable box. You yeah. plugged it into yeah. your Sega Genesis, and then you plugged your cable into this box, this little add-on. Really? And what it did, yeah. Xbox <laughs> that. Yeah, right? <laughs> So it was basically a pay-to-play service that accessed games, demos, and cheat codes over that cable service. So if you wanted to play Sonic the Hedgehog 3, you'd basically play it through this little box, and it would get like kind of downloaded to your Sega channel box that was plugged into your cartridge wow. slot on your, on your uh, Genesis. They were just before their time. Way before. Damn. They came out in 1994. Well, I, who had internet then? <laughs> uh, a lot of people didn't. <laughs> their, their out, of every, game, out of every ten people had internet. Their, their commercial was Game Genie ain't got shit on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. So it, it topped out at 250,000 subscribers, uh, and I think it was just ahead of its time. It cost $15 a month, which, if you think about it, ain't bad at all. That's, but back then it was probably a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. In 94, yeah. In 94... I, I want to say minimum wage is like five fifty, so yeah, it was, it was probably. Pretty, yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's a reason nobody's ever heard of it because it just wasn't a big deal. Damn, <laughs> it was a cool idea though. I remember when it came out. I didn't get it, but I remember when it came out, thinking, "Hey, that's pretty cool." And just think, everybody does something like that now. Everybody's on a subscription service of some kind, getting oh, streaming yeah. games or streaming movies, and it was what. Uh, 30 years before it's time? 20, oh no, 20 years before it's time. Damn. Yeah. It was cool. And the next one, I bet everybody here will remember, is the Nokia N-Gage. You guys remember this? <laughs> oh, yeah. That I got to add that to my collection. The Silver Taco. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that was released in October 2003. It was half mobile phone and half portable gaming system. Horrible gaming system. Horrible. I think yeah. it's better. Yeah. It's better than portable. It should be yeah. half portable phone and half paperweight. Yeah, the uh, the game that came out on that that actually piqued my interest and made me think this thing was worthwhile to get was Tomb Raider. Uh, the original Tomb Raider came out on the Nokia Engage, and it actually looked pretty good. But when I went into um, the, the place was called Funko Land, which was bought out by GameStop. Oh and man, Funko Land. Yeah, it's the shit. I walked that in shit there. That was awesome. And. and uh, I played the Engage, and the screen was very, very narrow. It was yeah. very narrow screen. It wasn't wide. It was like this skinny, and the whole gaming experience took place there. And I was like, "Hell no, I just can't do it." I think they topped out at like 16 games for that phone. Was that it? The thing cost yeah. 300 dollars. 
Yeah, you could probably get. I have, I have. Believe it or not, I'm looking for one of those. As soon as I find a good deal, I'm going to add it to my collection over here. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that was a terrible, terrible device. And yeah. the the if you use it as a phone, you look retarded. Yeah, it did. It looked like <laughs> a big a silver big taco. taco to the side of your face. It looked really <laughs> silly. So it just yeah, didn't that was work a bad out. one. All right, the next one. Give me just a second here. Oh, just reloading the page. Is this one will be familiar to everybody? The Virtual Boy. Anybody ever actually check one of these uh, things out? I, yeah, I, had I had two of them. You had two? Yeah, and, <laughs> you had and both my, of them. My ex-wife, my ex-wife <laughs> lost them. She lost them in storage. How um, did you lose them? They're like four feet tall. <laughs> no, she lost them in storage because she didn't pay for my storage. I was in Ohio. Oh, okay. Uh, and I had, uh, I want to say, about seven or eight games for it. And um, it was fun, believe it or not. Uh, playing some of those games is really fun. It just hurt like hell to play it. Yeah, that was the thing, right? Is it was too close to your face and those red vector graphics didn't really yeah, work the, out. The, it, you had to lay on the ground to play it, okay? You could not, or you had to sit on a table and sit on the table, sit on the ground, and position yourself inside of the chassis. Uh, the, every game was red, and uh, you get terrible motion blur sickness from playing it. But the Mario Tennis that was on it was really fun. Wario, I think it was Wario World or Wario Land, was really fun. Yeah. Coin it Land or whatever. It controlled really well, too. Uh, it was very responsive controls, but you would get very, very, uh, you know, I, I, vertigo. I felt like vertigo after you played the game for, like, 20 minutes. And uh, I used to always catch my little brother, hey, Monty, uh, playing it on the ground, and I'd walk by him and smack him on his butt with the brush, and he used to hit <laughs> it. Because when you're, when you're um, stuck in it, you really you have no field of reference of what's behind you because you're actually in this environment. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just a... A terrible, terrible design. I'm looking for one of those again, too. That was uh, released in 1995. No, I never actually did. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, Virtual Boy Man, uh, now, I think now they're pretty expensive, believe it or not, um, and, and and very rare to find. I, I'm surprised uh, Mr. Not Too Nerdy hasn't gotten one yet <laughs> because, he, he, you know, his video game pickups are epic. And uh, that's I'm my sure challenge to you, Not Too Nerdy. My challenge to you is to get uh, a Virtual Boy and mail it to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next one was released in October of 1992, and I actually did get this one. The Sega CD. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you play Sewer Shark? <laughs> I played all the games. There's only four of them, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Sonic CD, one of my favorite 2D Sonics of all time, if not my favorite, um, for, for uh, Sega CD. It's out on Android, too, so if people haven't had a chance to play it, Sonic CD was amazing. They actually used real MP3s for the first time in a Sonic game. You could hear, you know, sound like vocals, people singing in the background. My mind was blown. Yeah, but, real music, yeah. Yeah, real music. That was like the first real time video. I heard it. Yeah, uh, Sewer Shark that had real view. Real, video. It was, that was back when full motion video. Was, right. Night, that was what they what wanted. Was the us night to, one, the horror night, game. Night, night, night Shark. No, 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 no. 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 Night Trap. Night, night Trap. Trap. Yep. Yeah, Night Trap. Sewer. I said Night Shark. Sewer Shark and Night Trap. Night Trap was the serial killer game. Yep. CNC Music Factory. That, that oh, God, was... get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. I can't believe that crap. Criss Cross will make you jump. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Criss Cross will make you jump. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> that thing cost $300, too, and it was basically just a CD player, which you could pick up for about $15 nowadays. Yeah, um, I remember uh, the first time I saw one, my buddy across the street, Brian, he had got one. And, of course, we had the Sega Genesis Super Nintendo. And my older brother told me, we got to go see this thing. It's awesome. And we went over there, and uh, he was playing Sewer Shark, and I couldn't believe it. I saw full motion video on this little tiny screen on the TV because, of course, there wasn't full full screen full motion video. It was a little tiny screen like on top of stamp, yeah. Yeah, it looked terrible, very grainy, but at the time it was revolutionary, and I thought I was witnessing the future, but I didn't know it was just a future fail. Yeah. Snatcher, that was a good game that came out for the Sega CD. Uh, I actually liked the Sega CD for the good games, but there were some real bombs out there. 32X would be related. Please say that, yes. That was was a tough one. That's not on the list, but, I mean, it would definitely be on my personal list because (laughs) although it was my first exposure to Doom. Oh. So, well, you don't it, always it, hold it that. Has a shi- it has its shiny points, then. 
Yeah. Uh, because Doom was the first first-person shooter I ever played, and I fell in love with it. Um, and I didn't play it on the 32X. I played it on the PlayStation. Yeah. But um, we got the 32X for our Sega Genesis just for Mortal Kombat 2. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> I don't know. What is it's that? My, it's my wife making food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like Flintstones. What is she making? Your brown source <laughs> land? <laughs> I was like, boom, boom, boom. No, um, no, we just messing with you. Yeah, um, we got the 32X just to play the arcade, well, what we thought would be the arcade version of uh, Virtual Mortal Fighter. Kombat 2. Oh. Mortal Kombat 2. At the, at the time, I've never personally been a big Virtual Fighter fan. Yeah. I've always been more of a Mortal Kombat kind of guy. And uh, we had Mortal Kombat 2 on the Super Nintendo, and uh, when the 32X was announced, they they really pushed out this 32-bit arcade perfect experience, which fell flat. But um, and putting that thing together was crap too. You had these little silver slots you had to stick inside your Sega Genesis first. Then you take the 32X and slam it down inside of it. <laughs> you got to connect two extra cords to the back, and you know reconnect them to your 32X. It was just a lot of by the, by the time that you were done with that thing, the Sega CD and the 32X, it looked like Voltron. Yeah, and they lost a lot of consumer goodwill during it, during that period, too. Mm. They had really gained it with the Genesis, and then the Sega CD and the 32X really... That's when Sega really started going down. Well, they should have mm. named it the 32X Apocalypse, because the Genesis is the beginning, and it was all good then. Mm-hmm. The apocalypse is when shit hits the fan. Yeah. And that... Uh, that 32X was crap. All right, our Sega, last one. The Sega Saturn was shit, too. Yep. Yeah. But I, I think they were good games, but... It, it, was, it was not forward-thinking, the Sega Saturn, unfortunately. Um, the last one was released in September 2002. Want to guess? It was a peripheral for the Game Boy Advance called the Nintendo E-Reader. Oh, yeah, the book. Damn. So what you did with this thing, it was a. It would scan cards that would then uh, unlock things in video games. But you had to buy the scanner, and then you had to buy the cards. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> you already bought the game. <laughs> <laughs> this is microtransactions before microtransactions. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, in a sense. Only you had an actual material you had to go pick up. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't just order it off the internet. You had to go buy yeah. a pack, pack of cards. I don't know anybody who ever got the Nintendo e-reader ever. No, um, I wasn't really in the Game Boy Advance demographic at, into 2002. I was in the uh, let's get shit faced at the bar demographic. I yeah. Totally. <laughs> now, now this was actually a pretty good list of gaming flops, but of course they, the list varies. From gamer to gamer. So I'm yeah, going to ask you guys, what was probably one of the biggest gaming flops for you personally? And you guys watching uh, the show, leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think is one of the biggest gaming flops of all time because I'm sure we won't know what you're thinking about. So you guys tell me what you think, and I'll tell you what I think. Go for it, 9 to 5 gamers. What do you got? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> you need time? I got mine right on my no, tip. No, of my I got one. I got one. The Power Glove. Power I think that Glove. Was a piece of shit. <laughs> Anybody it have cool it? I love to have it. Yeah, we had it. Yeah, we had it. I'd love to have it still. I still don't know what the hell it did. It was a controller, but it it just didn't work. It, and you had to put those fucking cubes across, yeah, what was it your, used across your TV with like PVC piping and all types of other <laughs> shit going on. <laughs> I didn't have one, but a friend did, and I never wanted to put it on because it was all fucking greasy, and you couldn't put the thing through the wash. <laughs> <laughs> he's eating. He's eating chips while playing Punch Out. Yeah, right. Like, what the, you're gonna make. You're gonna give a bunch of kids a glove that you can't wash. No, that's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> a terrible idea. <laughs> Shit. No, this is bad news. <laughs> yeah, and that's what everybody said about it. Is it basically didn't work. You know, you're supposed to be able to control it with your fingers, but just but the the first responsive. Time... The first time I ever seen their commercial where the dude walks into like the stadium arena and he puts the glove on, I'm like, oh, oh that yeah. thing's awesome. And then I oh, saw yeah. it in real life, I was like, wow, this thing's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like God's next coming. It was Jesus yeah. literally coming back. 
<laughs> get back in the form of an electronic glove. <laughs> All I, right, I, uh, I'd go with the Dreamcast because I freaking loved my Dreamcast. I played too. Code Veronica on it. Skies of Arcadia is my one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely loved it. Grandia 2. I spent so much time with so many great games and experiences that I just didn't have anywhere else. Crazy Taxi I love. Uh, Show Caliber. Shenmue. Yeah. You know, right. even stuff like weird stuff like, uh, what was that? Seaman. <laughs> like, Go-Go Rockets. Yeah, Seaman. Like, it was just <laughs> this bizarre but awesome console and it died so quickly. It was so heartbreaking. But, man, I mean... You talk about a crash, it crashed the entire company right out of the hardware yeah. market. Damn. Yeah. Uh, typing of the Dead. They, they did everything yeah. different than everybody else. They, I actually have the keyboard and the game. I love that game. First they console that game. came with a modem. Uh, yeah, you can also and, get and a LAN a, adapter for it. And a web browser. Yeah, you can you play with keyboard and mouse. You can play Quake 3 with keyboard and mouse. Yeah, and you could get on the dial-up internet back when that was cool. Yeah, with a <laughs> web browser. Like, you could just browse the web. Yeah. Yeah, I bought uh, shit off of eBay with that thing. You guys know how hard it was to look at porn with a dial-up? It's terrible. I have no idea. How hard was it? <laughs> it was. It was hard. It was hard, Mr. Rabbit. Uh, now, literally, um, I, I see. <laughs> no choice but to stay hard when things aren't moving. Um, okay. <laughs> I've seen quite a few flops. Things I consider flops that I had fun with, believe it or not. I had a lot of fun with the Super Scope 6 for that five minutes. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh it broke. Yeah. Uh, Super Take Scope a minister I'd put in that same category. Yeah, I was going to say the minister next. Uh, yeah. But the Super Scope 6, I, I really enjoyed it with the game, with the di- with, uh, not disc, but with the cartridge it came with, where you had the six different games you could yeah, play. Yeah, it was like mini games, yeah. right? Yeah, you could play a game like Columns where you actually shoot different colors. That was a lot of fun. Um, but I gotta say, the biggest gaming flop that I've ever owned is the Atari Jaguar. Oh, you owned one of those, huh? Yeah, and I, I actually it was in my storage, and, and my ex-wife. It's I see. Q. Um, hey, I have uh, a I have an Atari Jaguar controller right here. Check this out. Oh, uh, let me see that. that uh, <laughs> oh, that's a small one. Okay, it's, that was a smaller that's version right. that they re-released. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, that's the same damn remote I got too. <laughs> nine, nine to five, same shit. The Atari Jaguar, it boasted this new uh, graphics power, and it looked worse than anything I'd ever seen. Uh, I think the game that I wanted to play on it was Aliens, or Alien yeah. vs. Predator. I think it was yeah. Aliens. And uh, when I bought it, I actually bought it on eBay about nine years ago, and I got a lot of about 20 oh, games. Oh, you didn't own it new. You owned it. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, when it was new, it was very expensive. Yeah. And uh, then it quickly became a failure, and so I bought it when I first started collecting, probably about ten years ago. Um, and that controller was just trash. It's a big. The controller is this big. It really, literally, is that large. And it has like twenty buttons on the bottom of it. And the, the graphics of each game was just terrible. It made you feel bad to be a gamer playing that. And that was probably the biggest flop and one of the worst gaming experiences I've ever had was the Atari Jaguar. Yeah. You ever check out the CDI in that Zelda game? Oh I think God. There's two of them. The animation was just flawless, wasn't the it? The only time I ever played it was actually there was a store called Tweeter, and they were selling them, and you could go in there and like kind of play with it. Man, it was terrible. God, I can't believe Nintendo. How did that, how did that even happen? I don't know some kind of licensing deal. Like Nintendo, like almost denies it to this day. Like they don't Jeez. accept it as part of the Zelda lore. It's kind of funny. Let me ask you guys a question. It's kind of off the subject, and I know we don't normally do this, but. The, there was an arcade game that came out when we were all younger called Dragon Dragon's Lair. Yeah. I used to spend a lot of money on that arcade game, but I never got anywhere because I did not understand what the hell I was supposed to be doing. Did that happen to you guys? <laughs> no, I knew because somebody told me. I had no... I, I would just stand there with the controller in my hand, and then all of a sudden my character would die, and it would say, game over. I'd say, damn, another dollar? Yeah, I just didn't just understand. Just quick time events, and if you knew how to do it, you could get all the way through it in like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, Just that was play. a bad game. <laughs> it looked good, though. It's on PSN. It's on, I have it on PS3 now. I still yeah. don't like it. No, it's not good. <laughs> and now you don't have to put your coins in there, though. You're all right. Yeah, I just don't want to waste my time anymore, though. That shit is terrible. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, right, well, and, and there's, another, there's another topic. Are gamers dying? Now, um... I don't think I don't know. If, well, I'm not even going to make that joke because it's too soon. But 
Our gamers dying. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought this is maybe somehow a reference to Robin Williams. He named his daughter Zelda, and uh, oh. he was a big gamer. But I don't think this is referring to him in any way. No. Uh, why don't you clarify the question? So what what it really relates to is something I kind of went on a rant uh, earlier in the show about, uh, and how gamers are starting to get this like bad reputation, right? Is they can't they they can't behave themselves, mm. right? So now people are trying to. People are trying to distance themselves from that word gamer, right? I play video games, but I'm not one of those gamers. I'm not <laughs> one of those people that acts like a fucking idiot on the internet. I don't go I don't go ballistic because, you know, my favorite game series is doing something I don't like. I'm not going to send death threats to uh, a woman because she believes that female characters should be represented fairly in video games. You know, I'm not going to do any of that stuff. So it's like this word, gamer, which I've always identified with since probably the 90s when I first started hearing it. You know, it's is that is that term kind of becoming toxic? Is it is it dying? Does it have a negative connotation to it? Definitely um, has a negative connotation at this point, I think. Yeah, um, I, I see that as well. Uh, but me, my personal stance is this: I'm a gamer, but I'm not one of them. I'm not that that immature, negative aspect of what a gamer is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, I can't even say it's to younger people anymore either. There's a lot of people 25, 30 years old who get irate and rage online if mm -hmm. things don't go their way. Um, and that's probably something that's going to persist. Uh, mm -hmm. There is no governor here. There is no one teaching people. We have the world at our fingertips now. So every type of personality and personality trait is going to be easily accessed online and, and these people who act this way in their day-to-day -day life are going to reflect that when they're playing video games so I don't think there's ever going to be um, a day where gamers are all mature and agree to disagree I think it'll always be an asshole or two and, and that's like in every aspect of life you know uh, in every field of of our day-to-day -day lives there are people who know how to act and people who don't uh, there are people who know how to have an intelligent discourse with someone and there are other people who break out into a fist fight. Um, and it's e more easily reflected uh, with this online atmosphere because of the anonymity of people. You don't have to tell anyone who you are. You don't have to divulge your information, your real name, you, what you look like. And you can openly say the things that you feel the deepest, darkest part to you without any fear of repercussion. And right, the shit that you, would get you knocked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you said it to somebody in, to their face... That's you get the thing. knocked out or arrested. That's the thing. <laughs> and see, I, I run into that, especially being a black guy. Most people don't know it when I play the video games. But every now and then I might, you know, say a, a term that lets people know I'm black. You know, I might be talking to my wife and say, hey, uh, that fried chicken's done. They're, oh, it's a black dude. Um, <laughs> uh, but when, when, when people find out, you know, usually that I'm a black guy, I, I'll hear things from people. You know, uh, racial slurs and all kinds of ignorant shit. And what I do, I call those people video game gangsters or internet gangsters. People yeah, who I try, in, to, in their, I try to be hard life, over the internet. Yeah, people who in their real life, they saw a 270-pound, six-foot-tall, big black dude. They wouldn't say anything, but since they're online in their mom's basement with, you know, with Kool-Aid next to them and, and, you know, and a cigarette, they'll say whatever their, their heart tells them to say. It's not Kool-Aid. It's probably Snapple or something. They're 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 lying to you. They're not drinking Kool Aid. <laughs> you know, uh, and and that's something that I think is going to persist. But the thing is, this we have to be able to uh, discern ourselves from that that group, that entity of what we do, because we're real gamers. We love what we do. We have a lot of fun, and it's a part of who we are. There are other people out there who enjoy video games, but bring a negative aspect to it. They bring. Yeah foolishness to it, and that group is always going to be here, so uh, maybe we need a new nickname of, you know, mature gamers or, or, you know, gamers who can agree, or gamers who can agree to disagree, you know, uh, because just this one umbrella term gamers is going to have that negative connotation because of that aspect of people. They're always going to be here. It's always going to be foolishness. You're never going to be able to play, you know, online and not run into people who you can't believe are actual real people saying the things that they do, saying the things they say. So maybe we need to come up with a new 
more refined term for gamers who are more mature and don't have these kind of issues so that, that negative connotation does not apply to all of us. Damn straight. I agree with everything you just said. Well, thank not, you. Not, this, is, not, this doesn't not happen to too mention, often, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention a lot of people, like, when you, when you say, oh, I'm a gamer, automatically people look at it in the aspect of all the bad shit that's going on in the world with people who play video games. They want to blame everybody's shooting or killing on somebody who played video <laughs> games before. So when you say you're a gamer, everybody automatically looks at you as a bad person as well. The people well, that the, don't understand gaming. The, the thing is, this, if, if you don't know it, if you haven't experienced it, then it's really... It's easy to judge people, but I don't think people should. But people always will. If you talk to a person who doesn't play video games, and you say, hey, I'm a gamer, they'll look at you with an eye of immaturity. Yeah. If, if, you're, like if you're, you're a dude and you're talking to, usually, like my buddies at work, they all, nothing but sports all day long, baseball, basketball, football. Whenever they huddle up, that's what it's about. I'll come over there and I'll say, hey, man, the PlayStation 4 network, I mean, the update just happened. They all look at me like I'm insane. <laughs> but I take, I take care of my business, you know? And so the thing yeah. is, I'm a very mature person. I take care of my family. Everything is set in its priority. But with my spare time, I like to game. And so the thing is, people who don't game, who may be real, you know, really big avid sports fans, or might, you know, do antiquing or things like that, or, or you know, uh, tombstone rubbing. That might be what they do in their spare time because of something <laughs> they really do. I don't know why that shit just popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that. weird, man. I don't know where your head's at. I, I was watching I sleep no longer agree today. with everything you say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> when they start, what? what? You guys remember the movie Steve Walker, Stephen King? That's what they would do. They'd go out there and rub fucking tombstones. Damn it. I don't know why I did that. Anyway, You're right about that negative connotation, too. Is uh, You know, I, I get asked that question a lot. You know, I tell people, you know, I do a YouTube channel on video games. They're like, you know, what? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, and I'll say, you know, but I have other interests, too, right? I love yeah. I love movies. I do a, a weekly podcast about movies. Just, and it's awesome, and everybody needs to check it out. Yeah, I love, I love reading books, you know, but... Uh, I like so I like getting stories, right? Is I like having a story presented to me, but video games are my favorite because they're the only time you get to be interactive in a story. It's the most immersive way to get into a story. And some video games are good for, at that, and some video games, most video games are bad at that. Mm -hmm. But like when I think of The Last of Us, I think of the story, and mm -hmm. I think how connected I felt to those characters, and more connected than I could have felt to, you know, anybody in the Avengers or, you know, just. It's because I played as these people. I was these people. Yeah, it's just you, more immersive yeah. because you're you're interactive. Especially but the thing when is, the comes out. Oh shit! It's, it's over. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, though, people who've never really experienced that, especially uh, the generation, our generation, the ones who didn't grow up in that uh, arena, they see video games as just light entertainment. You know, yeah. uh, they think of Pac-Man. They think about stuff like that. They don't think about how the potential that a video game has as far as the way they've grown. Uh, it, you made a perfect, perfectly good example. The Last of Us is probably one of the most cinematic video game experiences I've ever had, uh, besides games like Heavy Rain, which are heavily cinematic. Mm -hmm. uh, and people don't understand that because they never experienced it, so they pass judgment. And then on top of that, you get the negative connotation of fools in the world. Um, and yeah, that's my Final thoughts. Final Fantasy VII. We were talking about that before. That is a touchstone when the girl dies in that in that scene. That is, is a touchstone <laughs> moment. For so many people who played that game, for so many people, that's a, yeah. Sephiroth like, is a bastard. Okay, Sephiroth <laughs> is a bastard. What he did was totally uncalled for, and it broke my heart. And I was a teenager, and I cried like a bitch. Yeah. All right. But I mean, it hits home more because you know you. She was part of your party. You were interacting. Yes. With that, you know. Uh, she was a flower girl, man. Those flowers smell great too. The way I look at it is just because I eat a Lunchable doesn't make me a child. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what kind of Lunchable? <laughs> I put that pizza sauce on top of that, baby. All right. Oh, man. Yeah, so that's how I feel about it, you know. Are gamers dying? I don't think gamers are dying. I just think more foolish gamers are being born. <laughs> You know, that's a better way to look at it. I think the younger generation and people who have chips on their shoulders are more easily vocalizing the way they feel, and it's affecting us as a whole, you know. And I think a lot of the devs are going after the casual market 
which yeah. is also making it look differently. You're not getting people that are strictly into gaming being into it. You're getting people that are into Madden and into only shooters, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the only game that they play, so automatically they're not considered a full-on gamer or people who only played Guitar Hero at the time or, you know what I'm saying, like all these like pretty much genre-changing games or generation-changing games for that matter. You're, you're making more so it be a casual thing like with uh, Wii Sports as well. Same thing, man. It's like you're getting anybody to play. Yeah. You guys ever go to a rock band party? Yes. No, I I one of those. It was weird. I can't say I haven't. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> Were they serving Kool-Aid or was it real alcohol? No, it was alcohol. Snapple. Snapple mixed Snapple. with something. <laughs> it was spiked with something, I tell you. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of like being at a karaoke thing, but people were playing plastic <laughs> instruments too. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I, I fucking love that game. I thought it was a fun game. But it was weird, like, watching people get serious about it. But, hey, who am I to judge? I'm not judging. Yeah. Will, just... they, will they bring that back, you think? They're going to bring back uh, Guitar Hero or Rock Band, do you think? I bet it'll come back. I, it needs some time off, and I bet it'll come back. Yeah. yeah. I, they they, uh, they did that to death. I yeah, mean, they, they, they oversaturated. All the, you know, the Green Day and, and uh, you know, Aerosmith and Beatles, they did it to death. So if they do do that, it has to be something fresh. And something they do maybe annually, not every other week. It seemed like a new rock band, and yeah, it was coming out every month. And and you know people want to continually say what? When, no, when that was in its prime, I was working at GameStop at the time, and it literally seemed like a Guitar Hero was coming out every other like two weeks or so. Yeah. I was like, really, another Guitar Hero game? It got out of hand. When I first met my wife, she actually had it, and I'd never played it before, and. Uh, we played together. I thought I was the man. I was like, damn it, who needs a real guitar? This, this is awesome. Uh, but when I started to see how many more you know, expansions and different versions were coming out, it just became, I felt over-encumbered like you do in, uh, in the Elder Scrolls. I couldn't move. It's just, it was just too much. And it's sit in it, and then you oh, yeah. it over and over and over again. And it just becomes, you feel like you're an addict. And you gotta how much were the tracks on that? They were like two or three bucks, yeah, right? Yeah, per track, yeah. Yeah, so you had to buy all that DLC, any song that you wanted. I had a friend who had a ton of it, a ton of it. Yeah. I, I like the little, the DJ Hero game that came out. Oh, yeah, actually, with the little record yeah, scratcher. Yeah, that was, that was actually pretty cool. That it was? was? A new, it was good? Yeah. yeah, it was a new twist on it. It worked really well, too. Um, who knows, man, if the PS4 and the Xbox One, they're going to make a peripheral for games like that. I don't think that, uh, you know, the harmonics... Types of games are totally dead. I just think they're going to wait till the right time to let people take a breath and kind of forget about it before they bring it out and make it fresh again. Yeah, it, I th I think you're right. They just need a break. Yeah. People will kind of forget, and then somebody will come up with like a new take on it, and it'll be new. Fresh that way. Rocksmith game is that the one where you plug in an the actual guitar. guitar? Yeah. I have actually thought about picking that up because Me I've too. I've flirted with playing guitar for probably the last 15 years, and I don't know. It just seems like a nice way to do it. I could see you doing it now. Uh, way down up on the swan. Um, yeah. Uh, I wanted to do this too. A lot of people have said it actually works too. Like people who've never played the guitar before and have actually picked it up and played it, they say it, it actually shows you how to play a guitar legitimately. Yeah, that's cool. That's and, cool. There used to be a lot of stuff like that for really keyboards. Cheap. You said they should? No, there used to be a lot of stuff like that for keyboards back in the day. Even the NES had that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, when I saw Rocksmith, I, I believe it or not, I felt like you. I was like, damn, my father can play the guitar, and my grandfather, he played. And uh, it, it seemed like something that we all should have learned, should have been passed down, but he just taught us how to speak bullshit instead. But um, <laughs> I... Uh, he kicked his ass in Call of Duty, though, I bet. Yeah, yeah, I can <laughs> destroy him. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to actually pick that up myself because I was reading a lot of reviews on it uh, back in the um, the earlier video. I'm trying to think. I think it was IGN, IGN magazines um, or online. People were really learning how to play the guitar. Yeah, that's I mean, cool. And not just one or two people. Like, everybody was saying they actually learned how to do that without the game itself. So you can probably find it cheap now, get you a good guitar. I think you need to hook up some kind of uh, hardware interface. eBay, baby. Probably. Yeah. So I was thinking uh, last week, actually, I, I'm pretty sure that the Xbox 360 is the best console ever. Mm. Reasons? All right. Well, there's a lot of reasons. 
One is Xbox Live. Revolutionized, revolutionized gaming. Completely. It's the first time you actually got first-person uh, controls that were good. I mean, Halo, Halo had them, but I think that it wasn't until the Xbox 360 where they really got perfected. There's a lot of reasons. Hard drive. Having an external hard drive on that thing was huge. They didn't misuse it either. They didn't just install everything to it. I mean, a lot of people had a hard drive that lasted the entire their entire system. Now with the uh, PS4 and the Xbox One, I'm already looking at upgrading both of those hard drives. Mm. I I don't know um, if if I would say it's the best system, best console of all time. It was it easy to develop for. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely up there. Uh, it made had the a, West more important to the industry. Like it, it created a, s- a situation where the video game si- video games weren't just Japan centric. Well, um, well, yeah, I guess the, X, the, the Microsoft's Xbox one, Xbox 360 was the first. Yeah, you're you're right. Yeah. They made the it PS2 a three horse huge. race. Yeah, it was no longer just a race between Sony and Nintendo. Microsoft, I mean, Microsoft had the original Xbox, but it was the Xbox 360 that actually made a dent in the industry. A lot of the things that they did, Sony did very well, too, with the, with the PlayStation 3, but the PS3 came out a year a year after the Xbox 360, so yeah. I guess you could easily say that a lot of the ideas that were, uh, uh, that came out with the Xbox 360 were kind of gifted to the PS3 as far as design. Um, Xbox Live definitely, you know, I got to say that for sure. Revolutionized gaming. Yeah, that was I think probably the biggest change in gaming since the NES. But that Xbox Live started on the original Xbox though. Yeah, so. but it was. Do you ever use it on the Xbox Live on the Xbox One or the yeah, first Xbox? I, it was. I, I did. I was. Play, I used to play Ghost Recon on the Xbox. Yeah, it was not the system that came with the Xbox 360 with uh, yeah. you know party chat. It was a social network on the Xbox 360. On mm-hmm. the Xbox One, it just connected players. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's a good system, but you know me. I want to go with Sony all day. <laughs> yeah, but you can't argue that the Sony PlayStation 3 is the most revolutionary console, right? Well, I mean, it all depends on the time because when the 64 came out, it was revolutionary. Uh, you know, when well, we it had see, better graphics, see, but was it revolutionary? Well, the controller was the first analog controller of all time, and and that was the first time anyone ever controlled a game using that. So it was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. You were so used to playing games with the traditional D-pad, and when you saw Mario 64 for the first time and you grabbed that controller, it was an entirely new experience. So it was revolutionary, and for that time, graphically, it was revolutionary. Now, if we jump 10 years into the future, of course the Xbox 360 would be revolutionary, because of you know the Xbox Live, but I mean as time progresses and technology moves forward, there's new ways to revolutionize. So I don't know if I could say the Xbox uh, 360 revolutionized things more, because everybody bit off Nintendo's uh, control design. They they added to it and perfected it, but yep. Nintendo was the first. And when it comes to playing a game and you become submerged in, it, in an experience, the way that you interact with the game matters almost more than anything else, the way you're actually controlling that game. Was the, the Rumble control- Pack on the N64 the first time yes, we had Rumble in a controller? It was first, yes. It was the first system to have a Rumble. Uh, and shortly thereafter, Sony adopted it. But yeah, the Rumble Pack, you stick it to the controller. You know, Dreamcast, they adopted it. You know, everybody kind of bit off of Nintendo's designs, but that's one thing Nintendo's always had. They've always tried to be revolutionary with the way you actually control your games. They kind of fell a little bit with the Wii U, but before that, they had the, the Wii. They revolutionized motion controls. Everybody kind of bit off of that. So everybody revolutionizes. It all depends on the era that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Because if we could go back before the PS3 and the Xbox 360 were ever you know, created, everybody would have said the 64 revolutionized more than anyone else because of the way those you know the game was controlled. Then the PS3 had dual analogs. You know, the PS2 had dual analogs. The PS1 had dual analogs. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Xbox Live, yeah, I got to say that they created this social experience that you're able to actually see who was online, follow them, follow them, play the games they were playing, comment. All that stuff became a reality with Xbox Live. So they did revolutionize that. But I got to say that's probably the only thing that I feel that they revolutionized. You don't think the hard drive was a revolution? 
I mean, that came out with the Xbox original as well. I think yeah, party chat. the original. I think I think party chat is an extreme thing too. Like a lot of people complain about the Wii U, and the first thing they bring up is no party chat. That's mm-hmm. the very first thing that anybody brings up is there's no party chat on the Wii U, and it's powerful enough to have party chat. Why don't they have it? You know. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people think party chat is the biggest deal in gaming yet. I, I I didn't use party chat, believe it or not, until I started playing on the PS4. Never used it before until we got together and started playing games together. And I see the value of it. I think it's great. But back to your question, uh, Briar Rabbit, I think hard drives are, of course, they're revolutionary. Uh, and I think did did the PS2 even have one? No. No, they had a network. Uh, you might have been able to add one. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Uh, I think later on, you probably were, but they they, they did a network adapter. When the Xbox, the original Xbox came out with a hard drive, that's the original Xbox, they did yeah. revolutionize. Because before yeah. that, you're talking 20, 30 megabytes inside of a console. Yeah. I think it also changed gaming. I mean, it, it changed it in a way that it's hard to look back on and not... You know, it, it, it used to be Nintendo and Sony were Japanese developers. Games came out first in Japan. Mm-hmm. Consoles came out first in Japan. The Xbox created a situation where it was a PC, basically, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, Western developers swamped to this thing, and they started making amazing console games. And it was really the first time that Western developers became, like, lead developers for a console. You know? Yeah. And that was a huge that was a huge tide change. I mean, think about Call of Duty. Right, I know everybody hates talking about Call of Duty, but if you think about that being the number one sales game for years and years, when it used to be all about Mario and Sonic and Final Fantasy and all these Japanese games, you know, and it's just not that anymore. You know, Western developers have just taken over, and I think a lot of that is because of the Xbox. Yeah, uh, that's and you said it right. It's because of the Xbox, the original Xbox was the one that brought that to fruition. The Xbox 360, they kind of molded it, made it better, and revolutionized upon a, on, upon a recipe that was already enacted. Right. Um, but it was, I mean, the Xbox 360 was better than the Xbox. That's oh, what I'm that's saying. Right. It's the best console right. ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoy the Xbox 360. It's sitting right there. Um, I, I had lot, lots and lots of fun with my Xbox 360. You guys can't see it, can you? Ta-da! 360. Um I really enjoy it. I, I still do. I have a lot of fun with it. But I'm a PlayStation guy. I just feel like a lot of the things that you can do on the PS3, you can do in the Xbox 360. Some of the things on the Xbox 360 you can't do on the PS3, and vice versa. Um, I hold those two consoles neck and neck, honestly. I have to. I'm I know. I, I never have. The PS3 has always been second fiddle to the, Xbox, the 360 for me. Yeah. Even though the 360 had all those hardware issues, the PS3, the fact that you know, they didn't design that around uh, kind of like an Xbox Live type system. They had yeah. to hack in the cross media bar, and it felt like that till the day I turned off my PS3 for the last time. You know, mm-hmm. like th- they did a much better job with the PS4. Like they yeah. really they designed that system around it. You know, having all these extra features, but with the PS3, it was just it just felt like it was designed poorly. Yeah, when you're talking about the UI, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think now they completely did a 180 and, and switched positions with the Xbox One and the PS4. But the thing that makes the PS3, uh, to me, at least on equal ground, is the experience that you have on the PS3 that you can't have on the Xbox One. And uh, mm-hmm. the PS3 just has this amazing library of games, and there's so many games on the PS3 you can't play anywhere else. And to me, that adds value to the system. I know the developers have always had a much easier time porting games to the Xbox 360 than the, P- the PS3 because of that cell processor. And it was hell for them to work around it. And that, of course, would make the PS3 a less attractive console when it comes to those two. But, um, you know, the reason to me that they're, they're neck and neck, the numbers speak for themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. Xbox 360 and the PS3 came out a year apart. Now they're both at 80 million sold. PS3 ca- actually caught up and passed the Xbox 360. And the reason being is because there's so many, you know, exclusives that have been over the years developed and released for PS3 that you couldn't get anywhere else, and that made that overall experience to me better, if not just as good as the Xbox 360. Yeah, it never caught up in you know I I had both of the both of the consoles at day one launch, right? But mm-hmm. it never caught up in my mind just as far as usability goes. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking with my friends, playing with them, it just never, it never could compare with Xbox uh, Live. See, never could do it. The, the thing is, though, it's like a lot of people, and I agree with you there, uh, usability of the Xbox 360 does far exceed the, the PS3 as far as the UI, as far as the abilities of the Xbox Live, but there are a lot of people out there like myself, cheap bastards, who say, hey, the PSN is free. Mm -hmm. I'll, take, I'll, take, yeah. I'll, take, I'll take a free uh, ability to play with all my friends and, and converse with my friends and share pictures and, you know, uh, for, for a free experience over something I pay for, for, you know, less attractive... I disagree with you there. I'd so, rather pay for something that's good than I, get something was, shitty for free. I was I was gonna say that. I was gonna say if it feels tacked on, I'd rather just say fuck it and pay a pay a fee to get has, something that's better. Has the PSN uh, you know multiplayer and uh, matchmaking system seem tacked on to you guys? To me, it worked. It worked fine. PS3, yeah, it did yeah. seem tacked on. It never worked as good as on the 360. I played oh, Call yeah. of Duty. I played Call of Duty on both systems, and it still, even in uh, Black Ops 2, did not work as well as it did on the 360. Oh, okay. See, I never played Black Ops 2 on the on the 360. I got it on the PS3, but I think. I, I, go ahead. I think towards the end of the life of the systems, it's it got better. But mm -hmm. in the beginning, like within the first like five six years, it was it was no doubt Xbox destroyed PlayStation. No doubt. Mm -hmm. The the only reason why I pick Sony over PlayStation or uh, Sony over Microsoft is their exclusives, and I prefer their controller. I like their exclusives way more than anything that Microsoft has to offer. Believe it or not, I, I think of course the exclusive. I don't think really anyone would say that Sony exclusives pale in comparison comparison to Microsoft's. But I do gotta say that that's Microsoft had good ones though. I mean they had they did. But, war. But I'm talking about the quality Wars and the quantity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, quality and the quantity. PlayStation had more, and they they had better quality exclusives. You know, I mean, when you think about Xbox, what exclusives can you say? There's like five franchises that you can talk about. Sony has hey. a tremendous amount of franchises that, that you can actually speak on that are exclusives. But I gotta say though, I I think the 360 controller. As much as I love my PS3, the 360 controller kills the P and I used to hate saying that <laughs> that the, the 360 controller felt so much better in my hands than yeah, the PS3. It was much better experience as far as the, the way you felt controlling games for sure. That, a lot of people think that's it's really a uh, it's subjective though because it I've is. heard a lot of people say they prefer the PS3 controller. It and is. I think I think in this generation. It's like Microsoft is taking the boat on exclusives too. Like now, it's like it's like PlayStation took their network, and other than the whole like uh, DDoS hack bullshit or whatever. But other than that, their network is better. Their their XMB works flawlessly. Their chats work better. Uh, Microsoft is slow. Everything on their XMB is slower than shit. Mm -hmm. And that's not me being a fanboy. That's legit. It's slow as no, hell. You try to launch into a party, it's slow. It's it's wonky unless you're talking to your system, and I don't want to talk to my system. I don't want to do that at all. And uh, the exclusives, Microsoft's having more exclusives right now, and they're going to have the more exclusive until like the next year supposedly, because they have uh, Forza, they have Sunset Overdrive, they have the Halo Collector's Edition. You know, like they have more. They have more to offer in exclusives towards, not to mention quality exclusives. Well, I, I guess that's subjective to me. I think that Sony has. More exclusives, especially coming down the pipeline. I mean, all you gotta do well, is they, they don't have they have nothing coming out this year other than Little Big Planet that's worth playing. Drive Club is gonna be destroyed by every racing game this year, pretty much. Well, well, the, the thing Drive is, Club is non-existent. This is my point. If you look at PlayStation's complete library of PS3 games and the Xbox 360's complete library, and you go tit for tat on exclusives, the PS3 is going to win out. I don't know. I mean, you got Halo, you got uh, Gears of War, you got Forza, uh, you got all the games that came out first, like with DLC on the uh, on the 360. Yeah, you got the Call of Duty timed exclusive, but you got God. Yeah, you, you got, got like Portal Two, God of War, you got Life. You know, all those games never came to the PS3. Uh, Half Life, Half -Life, Half -Life, Half -Life did, but it was it was it was way er the orange box came out earlier on 360. Oh, it did eventually come to PS3. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. both on the PS3, but I'm talking about exclusives. You know, games that never come to the other systems. You got Uncharted, you got God of War, and the PS3 they had so much they had so much problem developing for it that they had just inferior products like Fallout 3 on the PS3 or Fallout New Vegas on the PS3 it was just a bad product. It was buggy as hell, but you played fine on the Skyrim. 360. 
Yes, yeah, well, Skyrim was the same. Was we we know why though. That cell processor was cell processor was very hard for them to you know port over to. It was a completely different infrastructure, and and they swapped swap totally again. You know the PS4 and the Xbox yeah. One. The PS4 is easier to develop for now. But if you just look at those exclusives, tit for tat, even if even if one is slightly more than the other, which I think PS PS the Sony has more exclusives personally. You think about those exclusives; they're going to be coming to the PS4. And when you think about, call, I mean, uh, when you I'm think not talking about, about the PS4 though. I'm talking about the th- Xbox 360 being the best console of all time. <laughs> I want you guys to sound off in the comment section below. I, I, I don't agree. Shit. I mean, I think, I, if, if I had to choose, I pick I pick Super Nintendo because Super it's, Nintendo. It's more. It's more of a. It's more of a nostalgia feel to me. Like I had more fun. Like me growing up, that was my my like peak of my childhood was Super Nintendo. I played the shit out of every game that was on that system, and yeah. they had some of the best RPGs to date on that system. Yeah, that was it's, a good system. It's totally subjective, guys. It's like people who are older than us are gonna think you know Pong was the best game. And then there are gonna yeah. be people like us who who grew up with the Nintendo coming out, and they're gonna think that that experience was the best because it revolutionized things. There are guys who are younger who think that the Sega. Sega Saturn or the PlayStation 1 was the most revolutionary. It's all subjective, and we're all going to have different opinions. All that matters is we, we're gamers, and we love we love games. I know. I mean, this design this question was clearly designed to, you know, create a debate. Damn it, Briar. <laughs> like, it was what it was for. <laughs> and, and to fire Beastly up, like, no, PlayStation's the best. Yes. <laughs> hey, how'd you get my voice perfect? Do that again. <laughs> I think you could make an argument for the Nintendo 64. I think that works. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if you can make it for the best. I don't know if you can make the best. There's just not enough great games for the Nintendo 64 to say it's the best console of all time. Super yeah. Nintendo, I could see. They have the best game of all time. time but, but you can easily make the argument that the PS2 is the best console of all time. Uh, I don't <laughs> that know. That I mean, it can be made. Some of the best be. games I've ever Anybody played. can make an argument for anything, really. Yeah, I mean, PS2 was awesome, man. I mean, it had an excellent launch. It came out with games like Tekken 2, which is better than the arcade. It, it has Dex. games like Shadow of the Colossus, you know. Um, Dex shit. was my jam. I mean, seriously, PS2, there's, there's a library of games that still are great today, man. Yeah. Fun for the system. Yeah, the PS2 awesome. had an incredible amount of games, too. Like, yeah. just insane. It seemed it's. I think the PS2 must have been in that time between games got so freaking expensive that they they couldn't develop them anymore. <laughs> you know, like they're still they look cool, but they weren't like so ridiculously expensive that you know they couldn't make ten of them a year. I, I would love to hear what uh you know video game uh, news outlets would say about the best console of all time. This is a a great debate. Yeah, and, and I think everybody's making great points, and I respect all you guys' opinions. Uh, yeah. But I, I want to know like what the masses would say. I know there's a lot of Xbox fans who just no matter what will say Xbox wins. And I'm a Sony guy. I like Sony. I like Microsoft too. I can't put the PS3 in the conversation. To be honest, I, it wouldn't be in the it wouldn't yeah. be in the conversation. The only thing a person could say about the PS3 is that they came back in the sales department and they yeah. have a bigger install base than the 360, which is a great thing. They had a year. They came out a year later and then they still sold, outsold the Xbox 360 by the end of their life cycle. So that's a good thing. Super Nintendo, I could see being in there. NES, PlayStation I could see in there. PlayStation 2, PlayStation Super Nintendo. In there. N64 has the best game ever made. Which like, game uh, is Ocarina of Time is probably one of the best reviewed games ever. But it's you crazy. Uh, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm just kidding. They're, they're, <laughs> I, I agree. It's not my favorite Zelda either. Right? It's not my favorite by any means. But by review status, it's the best game, damn near the best game ever made. It's, yeah, it's one of them. Skyward Sword did damn good, too, though. Yeah. Skyward Sword got tens across the board. Um, and if we're going to go just based on games alone, shit. The last of us is on PS3. PS3 wins. The addiction is wrong. You got to keep it real, baby. But, yeah, I, I, I totally respect that. I think it's a very valid argument that the Xbox 360 uh, may be the, the greatest home console of all time. But it's totally... Subjective. It all depends on the era you come from, the kind of games you like, the kind of control you like, uh, the exclusives you like, and everybody's going to have a different opinion. There are going to be people out there who think Mario 64 is the best game of all time. 
Yeah, Ocarina of Time. There are people who think that. Yeah, I mean, I think Mario 64 is one of the best 3D platformers of all time, uh, but it's yeah. definitely, to me, not the best game of all time. Um, there are going to be people out there who think that Halo 2 is the best game of all time. Um, it's a good... It's a good Mario, but I don't think it's the best Mario ever made. You know what I'm saying? It's to me, to me, it's I liked it more than Galaxy, just because what? of the simple fact. I did. What? what? The, the reason Are you high? <laughs> yeah, I, I was smoking that ganja. Um, no, uh, the reason that I think it's better is because it stayed traditional. Uh, it, it felt like the older Mario is put in a 3D environment. Um, and Mario Galaxy, while they're both great games, it felt like they changed the recipe. Not take it away from them. I like the traditional feel of Mario, and they brought that to a 3D environment, and it worked seamlessly. And I thought that was a great thing. It felt like the old Mario's Mario 3. It felt like that. It felt like Mario World, but it was in a 3D environment, and it worked flawlessly. It wasn't going from planet to planet, jumping from planet to planet, and a whole new environment. That's why I liked it more. Plus, it was much earlier than uh, Mario Galaxy, and to me, that was a, a feat as far as technologi- technological advancement. I thought that was amazing. How about something like the DS or the Game Boy or the Game Boy Advance? Can you put that in the argument for best consoles, or does it not deserve to be in there just because it's... The 3DS, the 3DS could be spoken in there. Um, the DS sold great, too. Shit, the, the Game Boy Advance sold great. They all sold really well, and, and they're great games. I love on all of them. Um, the original Advance didn't have a backlit screen. God damn, that thing looked and like... And it sucked. Yeah, it I used to hate that. Oh, God. You couldn't lay in bed <laughs> at night and play it. You'd have to get up and sit by a lamp. <laughs> You're like a but fucking old goes, man next to the fire. Yeah, I, I used to too. I, I used to play Castlevania Circle of the Moon with that damn thing, oh. and, and it was terrible. Um, but yeah, when they made the backlit uh, uh, Game Boy Advance SP, man, I was all in. Yeah, Advance I Wars. I spent a lot be, of game, hours into Advance Wars. I think the 3DS could be in this argument um, because it, you, you know. Do you it, feel that? Do you feel that that should be an argument in alone via handhelds? Like, do you think it, it, it wouldn't be separate. considered a council? No. Yeah. Well, well, if you did handhelds, uh, Nintendo would dominate totally. It wouldn't be... Oh, It'd yeah. be a fight between it Nintendo. Be <laughs> you can argue yeah. anything what else. Nintendo council is the best. <laughs> I'd put the yeah. iPhone in there at this point. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. How? You don't have... I mean, well, if you have a controller peripheral, maybe. No, but if you don't have the controller peripheral... Not a controller. Speaking of uh, the iPhone, are you going to get the Monument uh, Valley? Valley it's one of the best games I've played all year. Which one? Monument Valley. Really? Yeah, it's one of the best games I've played all year. Wow. Stunning. That's um, available for Android, too, I think. What is it? What is it? What is it called? Check it out. Monument Valley. Are you, are you, uh, did you like Bioshock? That's all, that just came out on iOS. No, I played Bioshock on a controller. Why would I want to play that on my phone? Because, I agree. If it's, if the it's the iPhone is in the art, is in the conversation now. You got to make your point. No, I know I got to make a point out of adapting a great <laughs> Xbox 360 game to a system it doesn't fit on. That doesn't make any sense. Because you, it's you got a new, on iOS. You got a new system with a new control interface. You need to make a new kind of game for it, not adapt old games and charge fucking wow, two hundred and eighty dollars for it. Crazy. It's, it's only it's only uh ten dollars. This and is you, right you, here, got that, you got that in your shoe, Briar. Come on. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that. I'm telling you, Monument that's Valley. It right here? Yeah, that's it. It's awesome. Really? Wow, I gotta check that out. It reminds me of like a, a really gangster version of Echoes or whatever. Chrome Echoes. Yeah, Echo, Echo Chrome. Chrome. Yeah. Echo Chrome, yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's oh. it's fun. You like <laughs> manipulate the uh, the environment in kind of this MC Escher way. It's really a great game. Hey, I, I I got a question. Are you guys going to be um on online tonight playing any games or maybe tomorrow? I, I take it everybody's off tomorrow. Yeah. Can we get together to play some games, play with some of our subscribers. I'm yeah. I'm playing. I'm going to play right after I'm done. Oh, okay. What are you guys well, play? Play too. I'll play whatever. I don't care. I'll play Call of Duty. I'll play Battlefield. You just name it, and I'm there. I was thinking of playing Last of Us Beastly, to be honest with you. Well, let's get in there. Brian, okay. we need to get you in there too. I don't. Stop I, being, you know, stop I gotta, being a party pooper. I got. I got to be nice to the family. <laughs> they can watch. <laughs> they can watch. <laughs> I'll see what Jan, I can do. I can't Jan make any promises. Kids, but. This is for you. Okay, let's watch. I'll try tomorrow afternoon too. I might be able to see you tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, because that'll be fun. You guys send me a message and let me know. Because I, I, you know, I work Monday through Friday, and my days are all gone. So. 
Yeah. For me, having a three-day weekend is like somebody sprinkling magic fairy dust on top of me. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I gotta like save up my time. I'm like banking brownie points for Destiny because I know I'm gonna be an idiot for that. Yeah. I told you I'm gonna quit. When you guys see the background just change to a wall that's right here, that means I'm in a little tiny room, <laughs> and uh, there'll be kids moving all around me in the background because there's no place for them to go. And I'll be playing Destiny. It'll be great. Let's think about this. What can we do out of our house where we'll make a lot of money? Uh, damn. Hmm. I guess I guess this has been thought of. Do drug dealers have to leave the house? Yeah, no. no, you can slide an envelope under your door. Just yeah, you slide an envelope like... under your door. Just make sure you don't give it to a cop. Hmm. <laughs> you got a little like jail. You don't have PlayStation's in jail. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. How about? Yeah. How about I could be a telemarketer. Oh yeah. Well, uh, let's talk. <laughs> Talk to Kate. She works for AT and T. She makes more than I do now. Damn it! As Porn. much work as I do, she makes more than Porn. me now from home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we're talking Porn. about women's rights. This is bullshit. That's right. I'll get on uh, spankbank.com. Oh yeah. Spankbank. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a website. Monkeyswat.net. <laughs> is that actually a website? I don't know. I'm looking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Spankbank. You know it is. <laughs> I got to get to make too. that. Bank, There's bank, your job bank, right there. It's bank, bank. Google. Gotta be right. Somebody made this. Com. It's not coming up. It's not. Oh, domain, baby. <laughs> Take Somebody that. call GoDaddy. <laughs> right. Can that be the oh, name man. of the show? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bank, bank. No, it doesn't oh, have. Uh, one. Uh, nine to five. Uh, you heard my little six dollar PS4 headphones, right? Remember what? when I was playing with you? I bought some little six dollar oh, pieces. Yeah, the really the clear ones that you're yeah. the, the, the ones that we were playing with the one day, right? Yeah, I got they sent me another one for free. Um, so I got <laughs> two of them. I want to let Briar hear them. I just I paid six dollars for these headphones, and they six? sound they sound clear as day. What are they? <laughs> you don't have a name. They're six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben's. I don't know. Uncle Ben's. They're made out of rice. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that goes with know, the they're, potato they're, they're that I use for a ears. microphone. Yeah, and, uh, they, they work great, man. Like, I, I'm Are still they, in awe. Of it. Six dollars. Is that an earbud or is it an over-the-ear? It's it's too old. I'll show you guys. Hold on. Let me grab yeah, them. It's a Sony Walkman headset. It's got these big orange. No, when he had them, we were playing Last of Us the one night, and he had them on, and I was like, that, I was like, Beastly, did you get a new mic? And he's like, No, nah, I bought a mic off of eBay for like six bucks. And Come it on. Sounds, I'm a- I it might speak. Amazing. I might speak like this, but I am a real black man. Look. I can't see you. Okay. Should be able to see me now. These. Oh. They're six dollars on eBay, and they work flawlessly. They don't have a brand. <laughs> no, we can brand them right now. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Thoughts headphones for sale for ten dollars. Bank, $10 bank is, stereo. <laughs> yeah, these are called uh, the Beastly Thoughts headphone set. Only twelve ninety nine. Contact Beastly Gamer now. There's there's literally no name on them. There's no look. There's nothing. That's crazy. Nothing at all. They're like they're, hey, they're like a Turtle Beach prototype right there, and you just bought them for six dollars. Six bucks. <laughs> but they work so well. I mean. They they kill my P4Cs. I don't even use those anymore. The Turtle Beach P4Cs. How how loud are they? Are They're they real loud? loud. Yeah, it sounds like the way I'm hearing you now. It's great. Man, but the PS4 uh, and the PS4 community is just so. It, everybody wants to be a hermit and not speak. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I get into a game, I say, "Hey, how's everybody doing today? Everybody doing fantastic?" And I don't hear shit. I expected <laughs> that to change because with the PS3, I always assumed because it didn't come with a headset. That's why nobody talks. On the Xbox 360, it's like you can't get these motherfuckers to shut up. Yeah, I even made that argument. I made the argument. I was talking about in the last of us, I said, listen, guys, we got to work together. Why is no one speaking to me? Yeah. I, said, I know you guys got that little blue piece of shit headphone set with the PS4. At least still use that. Cool. Yeah. But still at least no use that. Spoke. Not to mention, look at good. all the people that bought the damn camera. You know, you could use the camera as your mic, too, and there's oh, so many fucking don't. crazy amounts sold of those. Well, if you, I have issues with that because I, I usually keep my camera plugged in, and uh, when I do that, then I plug these in. People are getting du- double the sound. 
And so it sounds like an echo, and it pisses people off. And they really, they even mute me. You don't have the you don't have sound coming through your TV while you're using that, do you? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's why they're getting the echo. Yeah, <laughs> I, said, I, I turned my TV Look, off. This happened yesterday. They said, do you hear this asshole? I'm, like, I'm using him too. I was like, damn, son. <laughs> they do me like that. Yeah. But uh, lots and lots of fun. It's, it's real fun being cheap if you know how to go about doing it, guys. <laughs> I can I can write Turtle Beach on the side in a white paint pen. Here, write, write Astro A60. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> A70s. Like A60s, A60s, bitch. <laughs> it's a prototype. Oh, oh, I've been doing unboxing. So <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. That would be. That'd oh, be great. by the way, I just got this. Check this out. I just got the Yeti mic. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, what? I'm not using it. I'm not using it right now. I like literally just got it, so I'm. I, I didn't even set it up yet. What mic are you using? Because the mic you're using has always been pretty good. I'm using the. I've been using the Snowball mic forever. Okay, so. well, that's kind of an upgrade then. All right. Yeah. Snowball. It's great that you have too, because you can plug the Snowball right into your PlayStation Four too. Yeah, a lot of people were talking about that on a forum. I was like, wow, I didn't know any of those worked with the PS4 just like that. But yeah. does, does, does the Yeti work with the PS4? Yep. It, it does, yep. but it, it also acts as headphones. Yeah, yeah so, you, so. so you use it, but you don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, so it's a little yeah. messed up. But if you want to be able to record voice uh, from your PS4, the easiest way to do it that I found is to just take the... Uh, sound out of your TV, go and put it into your Elgato, or your game capture, and use a Blue Yeti as a microphone, and you're good to go. Because all, all the chat and game sound goes right to your um, Elgato instead of through your headset, and you're good to go. But you yeah, need I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, I'm going to get me a, um, a snowball, because sometimes the conversations you have in multiplayer matches are golden. Yeah, you want them. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. I piss people off and they cuss me out at the end of the match because I won for the whole team. Briar is playing friends. How, how are you? Uh, how are you liking the the new Elgato? I, I like it. Looks, I like it quite a bit. Um, I've been actually holding off on doing a review. I was going to review it uh, almost a few days after I got it, and then I decided to wait a little bit. But uh, I think it looks crisper and the color saturation is better. Yeah, I noticed that. The, the color one. looks better. Yeah. yeah. And it records it in 60 frames 60. per second. So once YouTube kind of unleashes that feature, you'll be just ready to go. You're there's a guy. The there's thing. a guy that I watch mm -hmm. on a. He's like a Nintendo guy. But mm -hmm. what he does is he rec he records and captures it, and then he messes with the the capture rate and speeds it up, and then makes the audio sound the same. So it's actually 60 frames a second. It's oh, kind of right. crazy the way he does it. Yeah, he, he makes you set your YouTube like you download a a, a plugin for YouTube. And you you clock it higher, so the clock speed is faster. But when you're watching the video, it looks at 60 frames a second. It's crazy. No kidding. The way he does it, and he's been doing it for like the last year and a half on every uh, like Wii U video. Damn. Yeah, some guys were uploading uh, their videos as 4K videos, even though they're 10 bit 80p, just to get more bit rate out of them. But I think they can put an end to that. Is the is the rendering crazy on that? Like when you, no, when no. you do a 60 frames per second video, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. The file size is a little bit bigger, uh, but it's it hasn't been that bad. I mean, the render size is a little bit longer. I I expect it to be double. And yeah, that's what not. I was that's what I was assuming too. It's not. It, that's I'm, shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Hey, I thought was I was gonna have to buy a new computer too because I don't have USB three, and I thought for sure to get 60 frames per second, you're gonna need USB three. It uses USB two, and it works great. That's crazy. So when when you're playing your uh, your captured video on your on your Mac, can you yeah. tell the difference easily? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, there's a couple of videos on YouTube. If you want to see it, you can find it. They they did like a little demo, and uh, one of them had like Titanfall, so you can see like kind of what a shooter looks like in uh, 60 frames per second. It's a significant difference, though. It, it looks smoother and it looks better. Yeah, they put it on um, uh, Elgato, like, tweeted a bunch of videos the day that those came out and tweeted, like, uh, a bunch of Call of Duty videos and Titanfall, and they were playing one other game, too. But Yeah, highly recommend it. So let's end this. Uh, 
Listen Before we end people. it, what, yeah, you guys, what, what videos can we look forward to this week from you guys? I'll go first. I'm probably going to do the Elgato review. Um, I really want to get a hold on the software. There's some new stuff in the software. I showed off some of that when I unboxed it and did a first look. Uh, more Call of Duty. I'm playing a lot with the scuff. My internet connection was horrible all week, so I wasn't able to play a whole lot. But yeah, I heard, back I heard on. Hector was sick. Hector was sick, so the internet went down everywhere. Oh, really? Is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so more of that, uh, and that's about it. All right, what about you, 95? Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more Mario Kart. I'll probably use some Mario Kart under, like, I want to do a video on the, the new 3DS, and I was actually going to do a video about uh, kill-death ratio and how I feel that it's ruining some game modes in games. Oh, like it because too competitive. Yeah, because a lot of people will just go into a game mode and camp trying to get a better KD, but they're hindering the game mode itself. Yeah, so I wanted to do a video on that. Yeah. All right. Well, for for me this week, I'm probably going to do a little bit of The Last of Us. I'm trying to wean myself down, which will be easier in nine days. But uh, I I've, I've really been wanting to get back into uh, some first person shooters, so. I think I want to play some Call of Duty, believe it or not. Uh, some nice. some Call of Duty Ghosts. I, I was going to play it probably an hour or two before we did the show, but I got caught up. My dad came over. But I'm um, looking forward to that and uh, bringing you guys more great gaming content. I just hit 350 subscribers. Hey, so congratulations. It's, it's growing, uh, you know, steadily, steadily getting bigger and bigger, and it feels great. And everybody who's supporting all of our channels, we would just like to show our appreciation. Thank you all so much. All right, guys. See you next week. See ya. Peace.